to me <laughs> and, and my and my kids and my siblings. So he's just daddy to us. And we knew he was great and we knew he was amazing. But I think we were all shocked and surprised to see that it, you know, we drove 20 miles from the funeral home to his final resting place in Cave Hill a Cemetery. So for 20 miles, I don't think we ever expected to see people lined up toe to toe, mm. all different races, nationalities, ages, religions, social economic groups. Mm -hmm. You couldn't see the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So for 20 miles, we saw lines and lines of people just waving, saying, thank you, thank you, smiling. They had banners. It was such a beautiful thing to watch. I don't think we expect, even my children were like, you know, daddy, you know, poppy has it like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, daddy's kind of punk rock. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, I was surprised myself. I, I knew he was loved and revered all over the world, but I had no idea it was 100,000 people. Yeah. And, th and there were memory laps for me uh, because I, I don't remember people talking to me that day. I don't remember what was going on that whole entire week. Yeah. And first I'd like to say, I want to give a shout out to Jonathan McHugh, the producer and the director, Graham Shelby, who invited me to be a part of this project for City of Ali, because it was the first time that I was able to see footage that was going on during a time that was my darkest hour. Mm. So things I forgot I was able to watch in the film I was able to actually watch this whole thing unfold during the darkest, my darkest hour personally. Mm. Rashida, yeah. you know, he's a larger than life figure. One thing I like about this documentary is it backs it all the way up to where he learned his values and core principles. What did he learn growing up in that pink house from the family and the greater community <laughs> within his hometown? Well, my, my grandmother, Mama Bird, and my grandpa, Papa Cash, mm -hmm. They taught him love and honor and respect and loyalty. And they're good people. Uh, in the documentary, in the film, you'll see my dad's neighbors. I didn't know my dad was a babysitter for his neighbor. <laughs> it was so cool that, that, that was, I was able to learn so many wonderful things about my father in this wonderful film. And he was such a warm and caring person. But you'll see why my dad created the Muhammad Ali Center, because he had those values instilled in him at a young age, those confidence, conviction, charity, dedication, respect, spirituality, all of those six core principles my dad instilled from his parents, and he used them throughout his whole entire life, and it helped him get through many trials and tribulations. Wow. Rashida Ali. Rashida, thank you. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Hey, guys, welcome to Today. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts.
Past January marked 11 years since an earthquake devastated Haiti. People around the world, you may remember, rushed to help, including two-time Oscar award-winning actor Sean Penn. Sean and members of his nonprofit organization, now renamed CORE, spent months in Haiti lending a helping hand in any way possible. And it's all been chronicled in a new documentary called Citizen Penn. Watching these amputations happen, with saws that were taken out of hardware stores or whatever it was. I mean, virtually Civil War medicine stuff that was going on. You're registering faces of human beings that have just taken this incredible hit. And they could be like, I'm looking at you, another adult right now, but you could also be looking at a small child in that situation. And you're, of course, thinking of your own kids. Mm. Well, Sean joins us live this morning, as well as the director and producer of the documentary, Don Hardy. Good morning to both of you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Morning. Good morning. Y you know, Sean, even before this earthquake hit, you were known for your humanitarian work. But and I, I was there covering that earthquake, and, and I know you can't help but be moved mm -hmm. when you saw what happened. Why did you decide to dedicate your attention to this, this humanitarian crisis? It, really, in so many ways, it was an accident. The intention was, originally was to stay in Haiti for about two weeks. I'd never been to Haiti before, but I'd spoken to some uh, medical uh, leaders there, uh, both uh, with uh, the Haitian Ministry of Health and also Paul Farmer, who'd been in Haiti for 25 years, to ask what the immediate needs were. We were able to uh, identify 350,000 vials of morphine. Mm. Uh, and, our, and our notion was to distribute that morphine for the uh, because they had no intravenous pain medications for all the traumatic injuries that were happening. And to, to distribute those over about a two week period and uh, we end up staying uh, 11 years. Don, let me bring you in here. You know, we showed this video at the, at the beginning of, of the, the interview here, and I think we all remember when it happened and people rushed in to help, but sometimes you worry for a lot of people, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. What are you hoping people get from this documentary? Why did you do join in? Yeah, the, the, I think that was the, the real inception of this idea to even um, go down there. I'd known Sean a bit before the earthquake, and then after it happened, I saw him on newscast talking about what he was seeing on the ground there in the, in the days and weeks after the earthquake. And I reached out and said, do you need somebody to help document this, to, to try to get clips out to news networks, mm -hmm. just to keep it in people's um, eyes, and that was really how it started for, for me. And it, we weren't really thinking about making a documentary. It was just that that urgency to get things out so that people could know what was happening there. And, and in, in fact, Sean, you were at first kind of reluctant to turn this in, into a documentary. How come? Well, it's it's a tricky thing because you you, you, you know there's the awkward space of being in essence part of the subject yeah. of, of it. And there's also, you know, these, the way that you are most effective is uh, in, especially in immediate disaster response does not always include um, the kind of civility that you might yeah. want portray. So you have to, and when you have people that you're negotiating with, they see a camera present, mm. uh, they're going to question agendas in, in the space. So it was, you know, I, I was very cautious. It's why Don is somebody I knew and trusted, not only as a person, but as a filmmaker, that if at some point this was going to represent an archive of a period of time that established core, uh, I, I wanted to make sure it was in um, yeah. honest hand. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they know your heart, and yeah. I think that's going to be very clear when people see this documentary. That's right. Don, yeah. thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, and thanks for the work you've been doing at the forefront of the pandemic as mm -hmm. well with CORE, so we really appreciate it. Our next guest is an NBA legend, a six-time champion, and the league's all-time scoring leader. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's legacy extends far beyond basketball. For decades, he's fought for change and stood up to social injustice. Now Kareem is the executive producer and narrator of a new special on the History Channel. It's titled Fight the Power, the Movements That Changed America. It recounts pivotal moments, including some that changed Kareem himself. One thing that was very instrumental in me having more compassion and uh, trying to understand what's going on beyond 
my experience had to do with the with the murder of Matthew Shepard in 1998. You know, he was tortured and left to die out in the freezing cold. Why? Because he was gay? It's the same as what happened with Emmett Till. Mm-hmm. Mm. Kareem is with us this morning. Good morning, Kareem. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing great. We're we're excited to talk to you about this because this this whole docu series really covers uh, major movements, and and I'm wondering yeah. if if there is a thread, a common trend you see through the mo- movements that have impacted this country through history. Well, I think. Uh... The whole idea of protest is probably part of our DNA as Americans, because our our country started because we had a a very serious uh, problem with being unfairly taxed for tea. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people who thought they were doing the right thing threw all that tea in Boston Harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how it got started. And it ended up with us having our our own republic. And um, it's part of who we are. And uh, I think the whole thing has to do with the fact that no matter what your little niche might be for your little group, at some point, um, people are going to decide that uh, you don't fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it it's, works for everybody. Uh, ask any immigrant that has come to this country. They, they've had uh, a tough time for a while. Oh. So we, we have to uh, understand why people protest and make sure that uh, we do not let uh, oppression be- become uh, you know, the, the rule of law. That, that should not be part of the rule of law. You know, Kareem, you, a lot of folks might not know that be- before you were a professional basketball player, you had a great interest in journalism. And you, you actually attended a press conference in 1964 there in Harlem with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. How did that press conference change you? Well, you know, I, prior to that press conference, I had never really, uh, I, I was kind of critical of Dr. King because of the fact that um, seeing my people uh, beaten and, uh, you know, attacked with dogs and all of the horrors of the uh, civil rights movement, you know, when you see something like that, uh, you want to retaliate. Uh, you want to do something to, to the people who, who do that to you. And... Uh, Dr. King understood how how Mr. Gandhi used the uh, the bullying tactics of the oppressor to embarrass the oppressor mm-hmm. and uh, totally disarm the oppressor mm. and the oppressor to deal with you as a human being. And uh, that that is the wisest course for mm-hmm. Black Americans because we could we could not have uh, uh, an insurrection and you know just fight off all the people that uh, mean us harm. Uh, we don't have the number. It sounds so, like such uh, a, a fascinating... It's all pragmatic. Yeah, it sounds like it such all- a fascinating documentary. Uh, let me switch gears yeah. just for a moment while we have you. Um, a lot of people know the Supreme Court is currently looking at whether student athletes should be compensated for playing uh, sports at the collegiate level. What's your take on that? Uh, I think that student athletes should be compensated. I, I don't think that you, we have to make them wealthy, <laughs> but I think that they should get uh, some type of competition, be, uh, compensation, pardon me, because uh, they do a great deal for the universities. Uh, the uh, people at the universities get to split up a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It has supported uh, women's sports. It has done, uh, you know, co- college sports is a, is a money-making machine, and the people who take all the risk don't get any of the benefit, mm-hmm. and they. I think they should participate a little bit more. I mean, you don't have to make them wealthy. Just make it so maybe they can uh, get a nice apartment or mm-hmm. put a down payment on a car or something like that. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Make the most
most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hey guys, welcome to May. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Oh, we've been excited for this story, Char or this interview. Charlie Brown and the Peanuts gang have been a part of our lives for more than 70 years. Yeah, and the new documentary, Who Are You, Charlie Brown, offers an in-depth look at the man behind it all, Charles Schulz, better known to his friends and family as Sparky. The special blends a brand new cartoon with interviews from A-list celebrities, including the biggest Peanuts fan we know. <laughs> he was living a quiet life. He built a world around himself that was filled with the things he had loved since he was a kid. Like a skating rink and a baseball field. Even as successful as he was, I don't know that he got the full depth of the love and devotion people had to him and those characters. Gene Schultz, Charles Schultz's widow and the founder of the Charles M. Schultz Museum and Research Center, joining us now this morning. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, Al, and all of you. Good morning. Good to be here. Well, thank you for being here. Congratulations on this new special. Uh, it, it really is a, a look into a man that I think a lot of people might be surprised to find out the things that this special uh, uh, reveals. Uh, we, what do you think people will be most surprised about when they, they watch this? Oh, maybe his humility, because when you look at 50 years of what he's done and how popular the, the characters are and how well distributed and well known they are throughout the world, just how what sort of a quiet internal man he, he himself was. I think this is so cool. I didn't realize, a lot of people may not realize, that he created his own little universe. I mean, he had a compound with all the things he loved, a baseball field, a hockey rink, a cafe, his studio. What made him decide to do that? I think it happened gradually. Mm. Um, the ice arena, he and his wife had enjoyed skating. The ice arena closed down. His wife said, why don't we build one? That happened, then extra piece of land, Charlie Brown plays baseball, the arena people love playing baseball. So it all just happened a little bit at a time and just built, a, built the world that you now look at. Hmm. And Jean, I, I'd imagine when you dedicate your life to, to this world, you know, there's, there's kind of an inspiration that goes back and forth. So was Charlie Brown inspired by Charles or vice versa? Hmm. Um, probably Charlie Brown is inspired by Charles Schultz. Mm -hmm. He put everything he knew in everything he knew and all the people he knew into the comic strip in some kind of transformed way. So it's not, it's not a direct that you might write if you were writing a biography, but it's, um, it's a, it's an interpretation Mm -hmm. Gene, children's books come and go, but Peanuts somehow has stayed relevant decade after decade. Sparky drew his last comic strip in 2000, and here we are more than 20 years later. What, what is it about the Peanuts characters do you think that is so lasting? Well, I think it's because they are like all of us, and I think even in what has happened in the last 20 years or the last 50 years, people are still the same, and people in countries are all the same. They all, they all have 
sibling rivalry. Mm -hmm. They all have conflicts with their parents. They have problems at school. They have problems on the playground. And Peanuts is a comfort to those people because it expresses those anxieties and fears and joys. And so it's it's comforting to people, and that's why it's lasted. And in fact, you've got three new Peanuts holiday specials, The, the Snoopy Show, which is on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, and I got the honor, Gene, to sit in that studio with you and with, with Sparky a couple of times. And I'd love to see that it's still the same. Mm. But w what do you miss most about him? I think that I always wish that I had his wisdom um, beside me when certain things happen. Mm. And I just, I try to tap into what I think he would think mm. so that I represent him well and and can be as relatively calm as he was about things as he went through life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you have been a wonderful keeper of the legacy, mm -hmm. Gene. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Who are you, Charlie Thank you, Brown? Al. Thank you. you. Who are you, Charlie Brown? Streaming now on Apple TV+. Plus. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. This morning we are talking with the NASCAR legend. Dale Earnhardt Jr. earned 26 career victories, including the 2004 and 2014 Daytona 500s. Well, now he's back with the second season of his show, Lost Speedways. It is part history lesson, part treasure hunt, and Dale sets out in search of long abandoned racetracks in a quest to uncover what could be, uh, what used to be. When you're talking about the early automobile and how fast they were advancing, uh, Sir Malcolm Campbell's car was literally like an airplane without wings. You know, it just had wheels. Yeah. And uh, to think of him ripping down where we're walking right now, 200, 300 miles per hour is pure insanity. Can you imagine? That is so cool. And, and Dale joins us now live. Dale, I, I got to say, this has got to feel like it's almost like a time machine for you. Mm -hmm. And I know you've done this before. Yeah, I love going around the country and trying to find abandoned racetracks and why, why they are abandoned. What's mm -hmm. their story and what they meant to those communities when they were thriving. Uh, the best part about it for me is really putting boots on the ground and, and finding evidence of those tracks. And uh, we find some pretty cool stuff in our hunts. And again, like we get to talk to some legends in our sport. We get to talk to about a bunch of people in these communities where these tracks existed. And uh, they're everywhere. We have a map that we've all been working on for over a decade of over 2,000 abandoned tracks on in the United States that are that there's still evidence of the actual racing uh, circuit on the property. So those are the ones we're most interested in, not the tracks that are redeveloped or are uh, no longer there. We, we look for something that we can show you tangible evidence of the surface or the guardrail or something that uh, would let you know that there was a racetrack there. And the stories that come with those tracks are just amazing. Season two 
is a big step up from season one. Season one was great. We had a lot of great success with that, but um, we really uh, improved on our production and editing and everything. Storytelling, all that was much better for season two. Well, you've certainly seen hundreds of racetracks. Are there any that have, I guess, stuck up, stuck with you the most? Well, going to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina in season two was pretty personal because I raced at that track and they just closed that racetrack for redevelopment at the end of 2020. Mm. So that was very fresh uh, for the community. So when we talked to people that um, spent a lot of time there, either watching races or racing at the racetrack, you can tell in their emotions that it's very difficult for them to see the track go. Yeah. And um, going to Texas World Speedway. So most of the lost speedways that we find and talk about and, and showcase on the show are small, half-mile dirt racetracks. But as you see, Texas World Speedway is a two-mile lost speedway. There's no other two-mile super speedway that exists uh, that's a lost speedway abandoned that exists in the United States. So it's a really amazing visual. When we walked up on top of the grandstands and looked out over Texas World Speedway, it almost takes, takes your breath. And uh, then you do all, a million p questions pop into your mind, like how did this place not survive? What what happened here? And um, we uncover that. We really do. We get to the bottom of just how close Texas World Speedway came to making it. We might still be racing there today, if not for just a few um, circumstances going the other way. Yeah. Hmm. So, so Dale, you know, you've been out of the race game now for three years. We're actually actively racing. You're, cover, you're an NBC analyst covering the track. But do, do you sometimes think, you know, I, I could get back behind that <laughs> wheel. I, I could do this. Every day, <laughs> I, you know, I um, I feel you know I'm I'm 46 years old and 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 there are a lot of guys that are still racing at this age and still competitive and um, and I still feel like that I have uh, some unfinished business and there's a little bit there's that little bit in you that always wonders if if you walked away too soon or mm -hmm. if you retired from driving full time too soon I'll probably always wonder about that but. Uh, I use that excitement for driving. I use the fact that I miss it. I use that in the broadcast. You know, I uh -huh. want to be out there. I think that energy is is good for the broadcast. Um, when I see something happening on the track, I get excited about it. I want to be in that battle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking about what that driver's uh, dealing with and how much fun he's having. And uh, I think that helps my my work in the booth as an analyst. So um, I don't think I'll, I don't think. You know, I'm pretty much 99% sure that I'll never go back to full-time driving. Oh, but there's that 1%. Yeah. You left the door open, Dale. Yeah. Maybe. Well, That's something yeah. you want to I mean, tell us? It, no, no, no. I'm, I just think that I hang on I hang on to that that desire to do it. I hang mm -hmm. on to it because I think it hang, helps me in the booth. Um, mm -hmm. I don't ever want to be in a position in my life where I don't want to be driving a race car. Yeah. Even if I'm not driving a car full-time, I always want that passion for it to mm -hmm. be part of me. Got it. All right. So he's, uh, we tried. Yeah, yeah he's, in, try. he's, he's headed to Daytona, it sounds <laughs> like. Go. All right. <laughs> and congrats on the new baby girl, by the way. I guess you don't say new baby. Oh, thank y'all yeah. so yeah. much. Everybody's great at home. <laughs> oh, oh, look at those cuties. Oh. Oh. Beautiful <laughs> I mean. family. All right, Dale, thanks so much for joining us. We really do appreciate Hello and welcome to Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. I'm NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn. This week we're looking at some home safety with tips and tricks for easy appliance repairs, cleaning a fireplace, and the importance of having a working carbon monoxide detector. Plus, what you need to know before renting a home share. All that and more coming up on Today All Day. A private island in Indonesia? You can rent it on Airbnb. Or how about this Irish castle, listed here on Verbo? In the month of September alone, there were nearly 5 million homes rented on just those two sites. Even Marriott, the largest hotel chain, can't ignore the trend, now offering select homes and villas for rent. One of the biggest perks of using a home share, the ability to rent something you might not otherwise get to experience. Take, for example, this beautiful home here on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. We're in a six bedroom home. It rents for $25,000 a week, but hang on, it sleeps 14 people. So if you do the math, that actually works out to $255 per night per person, a similar price to what you'd pay for a comparable hotel, 
but you get all of this shared space in an exclusive location. And with a kitchen, you have the option to cook meals over multiple days for a big group. Those savings add up. Jeremy Gall is the CEO of Breezeway, a company that helps property managers maintain quality and safety standards for vacation rentals. What's the advantage of using a home share? Two big things. There's so much space and the property is so unique. So you get to really enjoy something that's different than when you stay in a hotel. But that difference also means you should have a safety checklist when renting a home share. When you first get to a home, what should you be looking for? Yeah, you're gonna walk in, you're gonna wanna unpack, everybody's excited, but the first thing you should do is just orientate yourself and get aware about the property. Here's a good example. Here's where the fire extinguisher is and emergency numbers and contact information. And what about those chemicals under the sink? Don't expect there's gonna be safety latches on these properties. Uh, but if you're traveling with little kids, just be aware and make sure these are all taken care of. Maybe move, take the time to move them up. In a home, pay particular attention to the smoke detector outside the kitchen. Prior guests might have cooked something smoky and pulled the batteries. When renting an entire home, consider the unfamiliar features, especially at night. The number one accident at vacation homes is trip and fall hazards. This property has a nightlight, but it's always a good idea to bring one with you. I love this room. I see it has a bunk bed. A lot of home shares have bunk beds. What are the safety tips around bunk beds? Popular option, kids under six shouldn't be in the top bunk. So this is something a lot of people might not have in their own home, a huge balcony like this with this kind of view. Yeah, amazing. If you have a balcony like this, you want to look at three things, the height, the stability, and the gaps in between the balusters to make sure it's not too wide. Yeah, good idea if you have kids and also pets. Yeah, pets is a really good point. Pools can be fun, but a lot of times the pools don't have any kind of fencing around them. No, this is wide open and there's really easy access. So a couple things to keep in mind. One, if you're traveling in a group, designate one adult who's going to be in charge of pool safety. Okay. The other thing to do is check with the manager, make sure you understand how the pool cover works so you can open and close it and keep it closed when you're not using it. Some simple tips so you can safely enjoy your time in a home away from home. So it's just something to be aware of. Like I said, some people love it, some people don't. We use it a lot, mm -hmm. just frankly, Same. because then we have a whole house, we have a kitchen, I don't have to worry about somebody coming in. Anyway, but you, there are some horror stories that people say where they feel like they've been watched or videos. So what do we need to know to protect ourselves? Yeah, that's a big one. Spy cams can yes. be an issue. It's been in the headlines. Think about it. They are so easy to hide. This right here is a spy cam. Wait, that right, is right that there box? in wow. this tissue box. Yeah, there you go. And oh, I'm that's actually, creepy. I can watch you live in real is it time. Is it eyes? It's through Elsa's eye. Right eye. There. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh. There you Let are. it go. Let it go. <laughs> that is. Let it go. You know, it's creepy, but it's kind of cool. It is super cool. Wait, that right? is crazy. I mean, not for you know, you know what I mean. But like if you're looking at. You know. What else? Are those cameras? Technologically, too? it's cool. Yes, Dylan. Where that is a hide? smoke detector, an alarm clock. Those are both cameras. So these things are getting sneakier and sneakier, Wait, easier to hide. Is it a camera? Yeah. But is it for the homeowner to make sure their house isn't being used in a way? That's true. Like, you know, if it's just big parties for, you know, underage kids? If or... that's the case, then you have to disclose it. Most mm -hmm. of these rental sites make you say, hey, there's a camera in the front right. door. There's a camera in the living room. They shouldn't be in the bathroom, the bedroom. And that's why you need to check for things that are suspicious, like something plugged in an outlet in a bathroom mm -hmm. or smoke detector over the toilet or the mm -hmm. shower. Oh, well, What's now, it oh, doing wow. there? Yeah, that's, hey, now. that's a problem. Right? <laughs> what if you get there and, you know, you saw this, these great pictures on the website and then you get there and it's like, this looks nothing like mm -hmm. what I, I pay, paid for. Big problem. First thing, call the person that you're renting from. Try to negotiate that refund. If not, bypass them. Head straight to the website. But really, the most important thing, be proactive about it. Check to see if there's reviews. If there aren't very many, that's a red flag. Do a Google Street View. Enter the address. That's if old. the exterior doesn't yeah. match what you're seeing in real time, mm -hmm. that's a big red flag. Vicky Wynn, you always make us a little smarter. And I, you, when you said the Street View it's thing, I've been doing that street. from now on. It's a really yeah. good tip. And yeah. Craig wants to know, can you have the uh, Elsa box? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is next that's level. Cool. It's all yours, Craig. Look How at much does eyes. something like this cost? Oh, what is that? <laughs> I am, I'm going to get in. I'll check in on that and get back to okay. you. We'll we can get right a little custom. Maybe we'll do a Minions one for you. Craig's got a pants can. We'll be back, hopefully. Welcome back to the third hour of today. Actress and comedian Anna Faris had quite the scare last week. Uh -huh. During what was supposed to be a fun family Thanksgiving at a rental home, it quickly turned into a potentially deadly situation. Uh, she writes on Twitter, I'm not quite sure how to express gratitude to the North Lake Tahoe Fire Department. We were saved from carbon monoxide. It's a stupidly dramatic story, but I'm feeling very 
unfortunate. What happened? Well, so, first of all, we have Vicki. Well, that's right. Our investigate, NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn to talk more about this. Good, Vicky. Good morning. Yeah, this is a scary one, especially this time of year. We're inside more. The windows are closed. And this really could happen to anyone at your home or even when you're on vacation. So that's when you're vulnerable. What happened? So essentially, people in her group started to feel sick. A couple of them actually went to the hospital. They thought, oh, we're in Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not used to the altitude. Turns out they were suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. The emergency responders went back to the house, treated two more people at this Lake Tahoe rental. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You saw the picture on Twitter. But maybe was sealed, didn't have a carbon monoxide alarm. Hmm. Firefighters haven't said what the source of the carbon monoxide gas was, but they did say it was CO poisoning. Mm -hmm. And had they all just said, oh, you know what, we're going to sleep this off, mm -hmm. that could have been a deadly why situation. Why didn't they just sleep it off? Why did, why did their symptoms, get, or how did their symptoms get bad enough that they decided they needed to call for help? Well, the symptoms are headache, dizziness, um, nausea, so they felt so mm, bad, they scary, felt like they yeah. had to go to the hospital, which hmm. is good that they didn't lie down and just say, oh, it's nothing, I'll just so get over it. So would just lie down. A lot would. of people and, would, yeah, and absolutely. And the results could have been a lot different. In fact, Anna's dad, Jack, in the North Tahoe Fire Public Information had a lot to say about the scare. Mm. Take a look. We are grateful to be alive. We thought we just had um, the effects of being at high altitude, and it turned out that that was not the case. Had they just gone to sleep and hoped that they felt better in the morning, none of them would have woken up. Oh my gosh, yeah. that yeah. is so scary. Strong what words is, what are some true. Folks, folks who are watching or listening, some things that they can do to make sure that this is not something that happens to them. Mm. Really important to just check on any gas powered uh, appliances in your house, mm -hmm. whether that's your gas stove or your range. You don't want Generators. to be using your generator. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be using those without proper ventilation. This is another thing people do this time of year. You want to get in your car, warm it up before you head out. It's winter. Get that garage door open. Mm -hmm. Carbon monoxide gas builds up mm -hmm. so quickly. And Dylan, I think you were talking about apartments, right? Like, can right, you still... I, I feel like a lot I'm of people not live sure if apartment. I have one, but I live in an apartment. I don't have a, a car connected to the, the house or anything. So is it a threat for people who live in an apartment too? It can be. Sometimes people use those space heaters to warm oh, up a yeah. small sure. space. If that is a gas-fueled um, right. space heater, yeah. then that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. Basically, carbon monoxide is produced anytime you burn a fuel. And this is the number one thing, right? Yes, the carbon monoxide alarm. Mm -hmm. You can get this for under $30, $20, really, at any big box retailer. Mm -hmm. We picked one up at Dwayne Reed. Fire departments this time of year are also giving these things away free. So check with your yeah. local fire department if it's not something you can buy. And by the way, there is a... a a, a, an expiration on these. Mm -hmm. Generally, five years is the is the efficacy of it, and then you have to replace them. That's a really good point, Alan. Also, check the batteries. Yeah. Twice a year, daylight savings, that's a good time to go for the smoke alarms and the carbon monoxide alarms. Thank you, Will. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm glad you yeah. talked about this. And we'll yeah. be right back. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so get ready to take notes. Lifestyle expert Jill Bauer has a list of must-haves to make sure you and your family are prepared in an unexpected emergency. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, ladies. Nice to see you. you. Okay, you're going to show us what we need in our home and in our cars, right? 
Right, because you know this is the time of year when people are making resolutions and they're thinking about ways to get organized. Well, part of that should be, is my family prepared in case something should happen? So let's take a look at what you need the next time you're out on the road. So here are the things that are important to keep in the front area of your car. In your center console, you wanna make sure you have a tool like this. This is designed to cut through your seat belt in case you can't unbuckle, as well as break through glass if you're trapped. And then in your glove box, a couple other things you should have on hand. Make sure that you have a small first aid kit. Make sure you have an additional phone charger with a cable and make sure that that's charged. And also make sure you have a small hand crank flashlight. You also need to have some key things in the back of your car, so let me show you what those are. I like to keep the back of my car organized with a duffel bag like this one and here are the essentials I always have on hand. Start out with my jumper cables, an extra blanket, a comprehensive first aid kit, a couple of different kinds of lights are important. So an all-weather flashlight, make sure that you've checked those batteries, but also an emergency light like this that lets other cars see you in the dark. Those are great because they're magnetic. These emergency thermal blankets and rain ponchos, you can usually find those at outdoor stores. They don't take up a lot of room, but they're really great in case you need them. A pair of gloves, some duct tape, and then don't forget about some extra snacks and a bottle of water. And if you happen to travel with your pets, make sure you include some dog treats too. Oh, Jill, love it. you know it all. That was awesome information. Now you've taken us inside the home where you're gonna get to everything we need, starting with fire safety. Yeah. And this is so important, everybody, because I know you probably have on your radar, let's make sure we check our batteries and our smoke detectors. But here's what a lot of people don't know. The detector themselves, the unit, only has a 10-year shelf life. Oh. So if you've lived in the same house for 15 years and all you're doing is continually charging the batteries, you could still have a faulty unit. So make sure you're charging or you're replacing the unit every 10 years and the batteries regularly. Same with carbon monoxide detectors. Those should be located on all levels of your home. And then in case you should need to put out a small fire, make sure you have fire extinguishers. They have fire extinguishers now for specific areas of the home. So that also makes them a little bit lighter and easier to manage, especially one you might want to keep under the sink in your kitchen. I like to write the date on those extinguishers so that you know when you put it in. Most of these have a kind of shelf life of six to 12 years. And finally, if you live on a or live in a home that's multi-level, you want to make sure that you do have a fire escape ladder. That fire escape ladder is something you should practice with, not going out and climbing down it, but making sure that it fits the window properly so that in the event you would need to use it, you know that it's gonna work the way that it should. By the way, the smoke detector, carbon monoxide, and fire extinguishers are also great for people who live in apartments or condos, not just homeowners. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we're moving now, let's move to, by the way, I'm like taking notes on all these things, a ladder, who would have thought? All right, so <laughs> when a storm hits, often you lose electricity and you feel like, uh oh, what am I gonna do? Most of us have a flashlight. What else should you have? So these are basics, Hoda. You know, have a stockpile of extra batteries. Make sure you have some different types of lanterns and lamps. I like flameless candles. But check out this cool new innovative flashlight from GE. This is a regular flashlight that you're, or excuse flashlight. me, light bulb that you're going to put inside of your lamp. And you're going to use it like you use normal light bulbs. However, when the power goes out, it stays on. What? And you can even unscrew it from your lamp turn it on and use it as wow. a handheld flashlight. That gets a five hour charge, they're LED bulbs, so they last for hundreds of hours of light. It's a really cool concept and I think it's a great peace of mind. Yeah, that really is. I feel like we should all have at least one of those. Let's talk about drinking water if it becomes compromised. Yeah, so you can, you know, for kind of personal emergency things, you want to make sure that you have an all-weather radio, have a whistle so that you can let people know where you are, have a backup supply of drinking water, but then use something called a life straw. Again, these are things that you'll find at a lot of outdoor um, kind of adventure places. They need them for survival. They're great survival for your home, too. All right, if you want to keep your valuables safe, your clothes safe, what's a way to do that? I love the idea of a dry bag. 
pre-pack it so that you have a change of clothes in here, but also think of things like an extra bottle of prescription medication, oh. maybe an extra pair of prescription eyeglasses, things that are safe, ready to grab. Do one of these for each member of your family. And it's great Smart. to complement that with a full medical kit as well. That's another great place to keep those extra prescriptions. Yeah. Oh, Jill. Jill, thank you. If we missed anything here, it is all on our website at hodaandjenna.com. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. With more of us spending a lot of time at home, uh, there's been added wear and tear on our appliances. If you need repairs, don't expect a quick fix. Vicki wins here with the latest on that. Vic. Hey, Al, it is so good to see you in person, by the way. Well, the requests for, requ for repairs are really coming in fast and furious across the country with backlogs for service calls at companies big and small. This morning how you can make do while you wait, and what you can do now, especially with the holidays right here, to check on your appliances before they stop working. Kylie Smith from New Jersey says when her refrigerator broke in early October, it was typical 2020. We noticed that our freezer wasn't freezing anymore. Once this happened, we said, of course this is going to happen. <laughs> how are you managing then? We do have a second fridge out in the garage, but right now it's it's filled to the brim. We have three growing boys, so we need the space. She says it'll be about a month until she can get her fridge repaired. And that's figuring that when they come out, it's an immediate fix. Smith is feeling a pain point shared by thousands of people across the country. A recent survey found appliance repair calls are up 39% since the pandemic started. With a lot of us working and learning from home, many of us are using our appliances a lot more often. From the oven to the fridge. Consider this fun fact. Before the pandemic, we were opening our fridges about 30 times a day. Since the pandemic, that number has jumped to 130 times a day. Industry experts say there's a shortage of new appliances and people want to save money. So many would rather repair than replace. Business has been uh, amazing. It's really grown over the last uh, several months. Daniel Pigeon is the CEO of Sears Home Services. How busy are your repair technicians right now? Right now, we have a shortfall of 1,000 technicians that we have that we're hiring. It really is uh, something unprecedented. Heather Dyer Yoder runs Dyer Repair Academy in Richland Hills, Texas. She says people who've lost jobs in retail and restaurants are now taking her two week long course to become certified appliance repair techs. Her classes are maxed out through January. I have employers calling me weekly. Do you have somebody I can hire all over the country? All of my students get jobs. All of them get hired before they leave. Dyer says to avoid breakdowns, check on your appliance health. Look for your manual or check online for how to clean your fridge, oven, washer and dryer. 
Fridge coils and dryer vents are some common culprits that get clogged and make the machines work harder. If a repair tech is coming to your home, make sure they're wearing a mask and maintain your distance and keep your windows open for better air circulation while they're inside. If you're in the market for a new appliance, go back to the basics because high-tech appliances contain specialized parts that can be harder to find and replace. Find something with less bells and whistles, less Wi-Fi, less computer chips, because those are the things that are breaking and those are the things delaying you're getting your refrigerator back working. Some tips to make sure an appliance breakdown doesn't leave a wrench in your upcoming holiday plans. And good news for Kylie, her refrigerator has been repaired. Another tip, consider buying a home warranty, even if you've already been in your home for years. Just read the fine print to make sure it covers your major appliances. And what's also great about this, when you're under a home warranty, experts say you might get priority when you need a repair. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, so, so if you're looking for a good technician, because that's really the key, sure. how do you find one? First thing, ask friends and family for their referrals. They may have had a great experience with somebody. Then you really want to uh, check the reviews, make sure that they have good certifications. Get multiple quotes so that the price is right for you. And then also um, ask about their warranties. After they're done making that fix, how long is it good for in case they need to come back? And what if something is broken and you just need it fixed? Like going into Thanksgiving and your dishwasher is broken, what can people do? Mm. YouTube is a great way to check and see a DIY uh, repair situation. And also, you just want to call the local repair store. Maybe they'll give you some free advice. Listen, I've got mm. this. I need this part. What can I do? That's Sometimes true. they'll help you out. Yeah. I, use, I use YouTube to clear the drain on my dishwasher. Really? Yeah. It does work. There's so many wow. great videos out there. All right. Vicki Wynn, it's always great to see you. Thanks so much. Each year, there are an estimated 20,000 fires across the country caused by chimneys and fireplaces. Investigators say the cause of the fire here on Bramer Circle was traced to a malfunctioning fireplace. The fire chief tells us the fire started in a chimney around 2.30 this morning. Even this historic mansion in Massachusetts burned to the ground last winter. The home had stood for over 100 years. It took just hours to be destroyed. This one in upstate New York making headlines because it's the home of celebrity chef Rachel Ray. Heavy smoke and fire coming from the roof of the residence near the chimney. Fire officials believe the August 9th blaze ignited in the chimney. So what should you do to safely enjoy this before you light this? We asked the expert, Mike Segerstrom from Bridgewater Chimney Sweeps, is an instructor with the Chimney Safety Institute of America with 23 years of experience. Mike, what's the very first thing you should do before you light your fireplace for the season? First thing you want to do is make sure you have the fireplace inspected before use by a certified chimney sweep. That's you. Have at it. Okay. He begins with a visual inspection, checking the interior from below, then examining the exterior of the chimney from the ground. And the roof, even using a high-tech camera to get a better look inside. According to the National Fire Protection Association, you need to get your chimney inspected every year because over time, chimneys collect what's called creosote, which can overheat and catch fire. Often, that's what causes chimney fires. Mike, what's the verdict on this fireplace and the chimney? So this fireplace is not in need of sweeping at this time. It is ready for the season. If it did need to be swept, what are some of the steps? What happens? The biggest component is we'll brush the entire system out internally. Once the chimney and the fireplace have been cleaned, what's the next step? Making sure that we're burning good wood in the fireplace. It should be stored outside for at least a year. That way you can guarantee that it's not going to produce extra amounts of soot or creosote. Before you enjoy your fireplace, make sure there's nothing flammable within four feet and always have a screen to capture any sparks that could fly into your home. Mike says the most common mistake people forgetting to open their flu damper. The first sign of someone not opening the flu damper is the smoke immediately comes back into the home. The best way to put out the fire is to simply let it burn out on its own and never use water to extinguish the flames. It's going to cause the wood to sp possibly spark uh, and water in a hot fireplace could actually damage some of the masonry. If it's an emergency, make sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby and you know how to use it. Simple reminders to enjoy your fireplace safely. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes. 
Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Where you go? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Now with Nest Cam, these guys can check in 24 7. Hey, you little thief. The commercials are everywhere, so you can get an alert if someone's there who shouldn't be. Or the latest in smart home possible. technology from companies like Nest and Ring, allowing you to see what's happening in and around your house and protect it in real time. But what happens when the bad guys turn that technology against you? Across the country, hackers have gained access to those cameras and harassed families in their homes. In Seattle, in Florida, I'll leave you and your family alone, or I could do this. And in Mississippi, an eight year old girl terrorized. I'm your best friend. You can do whatever you want right now. You can mess up your room, you can break your TV. So how easy is it for someone to hack into your home security system? To find out more, I'm here with Mark Spoonauer. He's the editor-in-chief of Tom's Guide. It's an online tech magazine. So tell me about this. How common of a problem is this, and how easy is it for hackers? So first things first is that it's not that common for devices like this to be hacked. But if it happens to you, it's really scary. He says the devices themselves are secure, but warns that hackers can break in using compromised credentials. And they usually come in through usernames and passwords that are out there on the dark web. Tom's Guide security editor Paul Wagonseal is in another room logging into this Nest camera to show you how easily it can happen. Hey guys, I'm logged in and I can hear you and I can see you. That is very creepy. That is not supposed to be happening with a security camera. No, it's not. And the reason why he's be able to get in is because he has access not to the device itself necessarily. It's because he's able to log in with our username and password, which could be freely available on the web, especially if you've been part of a data breach. How do you know if you've been part of a data breach? You can search online at haveibeenpwned.com. Just plug in your username. If it comes up red, it's time for a new one. And when creating a password, remember that it should be long, unique, and strong. But Spoonhour says the most important thing to do, use two-factor authentication. When a hacker tries to get in, you will get sent a text message to your phone because they're not on a approved network, right? And that unique code that's sent to your phone via text allows you to grant access or not to whoever is trying to get into your system. So it alerts you before anyone can get in. That's right. It's a basically a gatekeeper. Wagon Seal tries to log in again, but this time there's two-factor authentication. There it is. So we have a text message that just came in. Okay, what does that mean? So this is our authentication code, right? So if we wanted to get in right now to log into our system and see the footage on this camera, we would have to not only enter our username and password, but this very unique code. And you can see that it changes every time. Uh -huh. So only the person who has the phone that's associated with the account can get in. So Good advice to make sure this doesn't happen to you. I'm your best friend. A few more tips. Don't forget about your router. That's the hub of your home. Make sure you're not using the default password that it came with. If you don't change that, the bad guys can easily use it to get into your smart home if they find your Wi-Fi network, and that would affect anything that's connected to your Wi-Fi. Now, these same security measures also apply to smart toys that connect to the Internet. If they have a camera or a microphone, hackers can get into those toys. So choose passwords that are unique, long, and different across your device. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world.
before you see it, you hear it. Iguazu, in native language, the name means big water. A waterfall twice as tall as Niagara and miles wide. We take a boat across the rapids to one of the wonders of nature. This is the largest waterfall system in the world. So huge, it cuts across two nations. Over there is Brazil, this side, Argentina. Disgorging the contents of five Olympic swimming pools every second, the center of the falls, called Devil's Throw. You can feel the sheer power of the falls. Our little boat is getting buffeted around and there is a constant mist in my face. But we're still not wet enough for these guys. Not even close. To truly feel the full force of these falls, you have to get soaked. Water, our precious source of life. In Brazil, it is everywhere. And the most famous waterway of all is, of course, the Amazon. What you're seeing is not an illusion. This is where two massive rivers come together. One black, one brown. They form the mighty Amazon. The Amazon River spans the entire country, flowing more than 4,000 miles, 450 miles further than the Mississippi. The rainforest with which the river shares its name is a haven for 40,000 kinds of plants and a staggering 10% of the world's wildlife, 1,300 different birds. And among the many animals here, 3,000 species of fish. Today, we're on a fishing expedition like no other, to catch piranha. Sandro Gamma descended on his mother's side from an Amazonian tribe. He now runs tours of the ancient river. It's like magic. It's a magical place. Uh, magical place. <laughs> Sandro guides our boat away from the main part of the river into one of the smaller tributaries. The channel is shaded by trees and the water here is shallower. The best place to find piranha. Piranha will eat almost any meat, even, rarely, humans. To attract these underwater killers, Sandro mimics a distressed animal in the water. They like noise. They like noise like this. It's less like fishing, more like hunting. Would it help if I cut my finger and put it in the water? <laughs> oh, I caught one. You got one, you got one. Then Sandro hooks one. Wow. Those are some sharp teeth. She's saying, come any closer, I'm going to bite your face off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Day one over, and we've caught one fish, but a hunter always eats what he catches. She wanted to eat me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is my revenge. It's your revenge, right. It tastes like cod, like kind of... Oh, yeah, like freshwater fish. It tastes yeah. like a freshwater fish, actually. Yeah. There isn't very much meat here. It's, this is, I mean, it's very bony. It's day two, and we try another fishing spot. This time, I have more luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got one, I think yes. I got one. Yes! Yes, my All lord. Right. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. It looks like I wasn't the only one to target this fish. Piranhas even prey on each other. Uh, wow. I took a chunk of her to, you see, this area here. Hold it by here. Yeah. Woohoo! OK, I think you should do this because I don't want to cause her any more pain, honestly. Okay. And also, I don't want to cause myself any pain. Right. Our fishing expedition, somewhat successful, Sandro has a final surprise. He assures me, and I took some reassuring, there are no piranhas here. But beneath the water, we are soon surrounded <laughs> by the Amazon's famous pink dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, he's touching. <laughs> they're, they're, they're rubbing against our legs here. It's incredible. It's like rubber. The people here believe these dolphins are princes. 
Dolphins are, are very mythological animals. Right. The According to the indigenous legend, after midnight, he becomes a handsome boy. Right. And suddenly, he chases the girls. And when really? she, she's pregnant, she will blame on the dolphins. <laughs> she will blame on the dolphins. <laughs> they are no threat to us, of course, but it turns out the fish they eat include piranhas. In the Amazon, every animal depends on another. The power and the beauty of this river and its inhabitants, both stunning and humbling. Next, somewhere beneath this vast canopy of green, deep in the heart of the rainforest, these colossal giants and what it's like to climb one. I am now officially really quite frightened. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast free wherever you get your podcasts. The Amazon, a vast two million square miles of awesome, largely untamed nature. An estimated 390 million trees. Today, I'm climbing just one, but it's a monster. How tall is the tree we're going to climb? It's 180 feet. My guide, Leo Princey, knows the rainforest well. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> its traditions, like this method of preventing insect bites. I can smell it, yeah. <clears throat> Covering yourself with dead ants. <laughs> they, they bite you. <laughs> they do. They bite you while you're trying to stop other insects from biting you. <laughs> and the jungle's predators. That's where a jaguar's climbed the tree. Yeah, one year ago, around. Don't think that if you want to run from a jaguar, if you climb a tree, you are safe. Not exactly reassuring. I don't think I've climbed a tree since I was a boy. <laughs> and definitely not like this. And don't look down, right? Ah, you can look if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway. Yeah, this is halfway. Yeah. As I sweat, Leo's nine-year-old daughter, Kenna, passes me. Fearless. Not exactly how I feel. Talking to me like this is a good way to stop me from thinking about the fact that I'm hanging by a rope about a hundred feet in the air. I'm increasingly nervous. I am now officially really quite frightened. <laughs> Finally, reaching the top. Okay, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. I can't actually believe that I, I have got up here. <laughs> Honestly, my legs are shaking, <laughs> even though I've got this rope attached to me. But the view is just stunning. The air above the Amazon, thick with the sounds and smells of life. Look around, just to look around. The experience of a lifetime, exhilarating and a little exhausting. I think I've earned a rest. Leo can't easily relax. He's increasingly worried for his forest. His home is here in the jungle with his wife, Vanessa. 
Their children were born on this deck. All three are homeschooled. They playfully call their dad the guru. What he knows is that this place is increasingly threatened. Fires have raged across the forest. Logging is destroying yet more. The wonderful wildlife here threatened from all angles. But it doesn't have to be this way. People have plundered the Amazon's rich resources for more than 100 years, when European traders exploited the Amazon for rubber. But next, how those same men created something here that was extraordinary and beautiful. When they built, of all things, an opera house in the heart of this rainforest. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Amazon rainforest, this seemingly infinite green canopy of trees, broken only by the winding silver thread of this 4,000 mile river, is a history that we might be able to learn from. 120 years ago, a lone paddle steam made its way along here, and on board, Carlos Fermin Fitzcarraldt, who had what many people said was a crazy dream, to build an opera house in the heart of the jungle. So determined was he that at one point, and the inspiration for the movie Fitzcarraldo, he had his steamship taken apart piece by piece and transported over a mountain. And though Fitzcarrald never fulfilled his dream, others did. In the 1890s, out of the jungle rose this spectacular, unlikely structure. And from within came this. The Teatro Amazonas, completed in 1896, is celebrated as one of the most magnificent opera houses in the world. The theatre is located in today's bustling riverside city of Manaus, built by barons made rich by the 19th century rubber trade, early exploiters of the Amazon's rich resources. They wanted to rival the grand opera houses of Europe and bring civilization to this remote part of the world. Gabriel. Hello, Q. Hey, how are Welcome. you? Gabriel Leal is my guide to the theater. When they built this place 120 years ago, yes. what was here? Oh, there is nothing here. It was only the jungle. Look at this. 
it feels like it's never been changed in all that time. They bought the most expensive, the best materials of the world to put here. The chandeliers are bronze and crystals from France. They are French chandeliers from Paris. We're okay. in the middle of the Amazon. Yes. yes. Under chandeliers from France. Yes. This is an Italian style. Yes. It's a small piece of Italy and Manaus. You can see why they call it the Noble Room. The magnificent dome is decorated with 36,000 tiles. And breathtaking though the architecture is, it is at night for the music that the people come. The orchestra is led by conductor Ottavio Simoes. Something that really struck me was you said, good evening. Boa noite. Good and evening. the whole audience answered, says, good evening back to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Warm climate, warm people. Warm nights, warm yeah. people. It's for sure. Where is he? That guy from the moustache. Yeah. It's a Brazilian composer. Otavio points to his ancestor, looking down from the ceiling above us. He was your great, great, great grandfather. Yeah. He's looking down on you. He's looking down. Every day when I, I'm ready to conduct something, I look at him and say, I say, well, here I go again. <laughs> What's so special about this place? When you see the world map, can you imagine in the rainforest something like... Something this? like this? Yes, yes, it's a wonderful place. It's special. Perhaps this jewel in the jungle can teach us something. That we humans don't have to do damage. That we can add to nature's beauty. Of course, that's not today's story of us and the Amazon, but maybe one day we will learn to coexist and share our planet with nature. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, welcome to May. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star, Katie Ledecky, in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It feels like another lifetime. Back when flying around the world was so much easier, we took an incredible journey across Africa. Dawn over the Maasai Mara. Beneath us, roaming free, the big beasts of Kenya. On this journey, we'll get close to the animals of this vast continent. That big guy. Oof. He is telling us that he's there. He's looking right at us. From the fiercest to the fastest, 
to the tallest on land and the deadliest beneath the water. And where better to begin than with a hunter as old as the dinosaurs, the ancient crocodile. You don't feel nervous this close to them? They're shy, they'll go away. Sami Muneye has lived in this part of Africa all his life. He respects the rhythms of the place. Because this one seems to be looking. Well, he's already eaten. <laughs> he's already eaten? He's already eaten. <laughs> okay. We can learn from Africa, he says, how to look after ourselves and our planet. Because we are so greedy. Animals are, most of them are opportunists. We are so greedy. We fly south on a journey that will take us right across the continent. First to what's been called Africa's last Eden. If the natural world is worth saving, this place is the reason why. The Okavango Delta, an inland river basin so vast it's visible from space. A watery paradise in the midst of Botswana's Kalahari Desert, best experienced in a traditional dugout called a Makora. Welcome to the wilderness. <laughs> this is Africa's last remaining wetland wilderness. Steve Boys has explored these waterways for 1,500 miles. It is a treasure, but it's a very delicate one. Simple water is the source and sustenance of life, of so much life. Yes. The Garden of Eden. This is a Garden of Eden, yeah. In these waters, one of Steve's favorite animals, and one of the most dangerous in the world. Aggressive, territorial, and inevitably threatened by us humans. We're going around a hippo pool. What are you going to do when the hippo comes at the Makoro? A panic. <laughs> If I start making funny grunting sounds, you can join me. It'll try and stop him. Any other advice? Don't let your mind wander. Be in the wilderness, be wild, and you'll be safe. Okay. Be at one with nature. I can hear them. Oof. He's telling us that he's there. Steve's been near fatally attacked, his canoe thrown over, his love for hippos and him. Uh, hippos do kill many, many people every year. Typically on dugout canoes like this. Okay. <laughs> They've disappeared. Yep, we be stressing them out. These three ton animals don't swim, they walk along the bottom, essential for keeping the waterways open. Guardians of the river, Steve calls them. They can spend five to nine minutes under there. Wow. They can sleep underwater. It is incredible to be so close to them. As the sun sets, one more breathtaking encounter. An animal we'll soon see more of. Big male lion. He's looking right at us. Now let's be careful, calm. He turned on us here. Roger, we'll go 10 meters further inside his space. And you'll that is incredible. That is the best lion sight I've seen in my life. First time on McCall. It's incredible. It'll only be a few hours before my pulse rate returns to normal. Okay. And we're really close there. If water is the lifeblood of Botswana, we're on the way to meet a couple who are its beating heart. Husband and wife conservationist, Derek and Beverly Joubert. Tracking lions takes time. There's a cub track here. It's fresh, this is a couple of hours old. But after hours searching, there's a lioness. We find a pride. So there's a grandmother, a mother, and a, a cub. We've known these lions now for so seven years, I would say. Yeah. And we can track this family back about 20 years. Climbing to the top of a hill, we watched an incredible moment. Oh. 
a lioness conjoling her nervous cub to take the plunge. I was terrified of water, anxious about the hippos and the crocs in there. These lions have had to adapt to going through water, whereas most lions in Botswana don't go through water at all. It's only in the Okavango. When Derek and Beverly first arrived in the Salinda Reserve, hunting had reduced the population to two female lions. Some 30 years later, the lions number over 100 and counting. Now Derek and Beverly must battle to preserve their life's work. They say they get their strength from their love for each other and their incredible motivation from their love for these lions. But Africa's conservationists always face an uphill struggle. Climate change, hunting, and put simply, humans, all threaten this fragile world. Across the Okavango Delta, another fearless conservationist. Brave is not the word Brad Bresterlink would use about himself, but how else to describe a man who lives in the wild, amongst some of the most dangerous animals on Earth, for months at a time. This is your home. We're in your living room. I mean, it's not bad place, is it? Yeah, you can go back to London if you want. <laughs> I'm staying here. Who likes to get close to its inhabitants. That big guy. Maybe too close. The power of these animals makes me feel unexpectedly like an endangered species. Close encounters are what Brad lives for. He's been following this pack of wild dogs for years. And as soon as they get on the move and start hunting, they'll be very difficult to, keep, to find, to keep up with. And soon, the drama of the plains is all around us. What just happened? So he has been trailing. Obviously, you can pick up food from these dogs. And they're just getting fed up, so just attack it. As the sun goes down and we prepare to camp outside, we make sure we are into the wind. So that any sound travels on the wind. So even when you're sleeping, yeah. you're planning your next day, you're listening. 90% of the work at night, uh, that we do with lions is driven by what we hear at night. It's really good, actually. <laughs> Fed and watered, time for some advice. What do I need to know? Mm, torch, mainly. Right, yeah, just, just blind them. They don't really want to eat us. You know. They used <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Snakes, spiders. That's why I sleep on top. <laughs> you sleep up there. <laughs> and I sleep down here. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Sure enough, as the stars rise in the southern sky, predators are on the prowl. Tell me what, what animals were there last night? Big male lion doing a territorial march up and down past us. Um, a hyena a couple of times last night. Um, there must be a leopard harassing baboons. Uh, they're really performing that side. So another day begins over the delta. You know, you live in a city. Do you wake up full of optimism every morning? I'd wake up with optimism every day. Optimism in the face of adversity seems like a common theme in this part of the world. You could be forgiven for thinking these past few years that our planet is trying to tell us something. Africa is a world like no other, its future our future may depend on leaving a lighter footprint. But if I never get to make a trip like this again, I'll never forget it.
Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us here at Today All Day. I've, I've met some really great folks and, and had the chance to explore some amazing places. And I wanted to share some of these special moments with you again. I hope you enjoy these next interviews as much as I have. For generations, Sesame Street has taught kids so many important lessons, and now they're tackling a new one. And they always do it in such a good way. So the importance of celebrating differences and teaching our, our youngsters about race and racism. That's right. Well, this time they're doing it through the eyes of two new friends who I got the chance to meet. Hi, my name is Wes. Hey, everybody. I'm Elijah Walker. Hi, Elmo's name is Elmo. <laughs> there are two new neighbors in the neighborhood. It is so great to meet you, Wes and Elijah. And, and, and Elmo, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Mr. Broker. Awesome. While Sesame has always celebrated differences and diversity, a father and son tackle a tough issue, race. Why was it important to, to address race and differences now? After what happened last summer, we knew that we needed to be more explicit about talking about race because children and families needed it. With Sesame's Coming Together initiative, creating the ABCs of racial literacy, seeing the issue as Sesame always does through the eyes of a young child. Five-year-old Wes and his meteorologist dad Elijah's experiences, but starting with the basics. Elmo wants to know why Wes's skin is brown. Oh, I know why, Elmo. My mom and dad told me. It's because of melanin. Right, Dad? That's right. Melanin? Uh -oh, what's that? Well, Melanin is something that we each have inside our bodies that make the outside of our bodies the skin color that it is. It also gives us our eye and our hair color. Experts say children begin to notice the differences in race in infancy and start forming their own sense of identity at a very young age. So Sesame decided to tackle race and racism head on. One of the great things about Sesame Street is that people accept people for who they are. But, but Wes, you, there have been times where people have done things or, or said things that didn't make you feel good. There was, there was one time um, at my old school when I wanted to be the pretend guitarist, but they said that I couldn't be the pretend guitarist because of the way that I look, because people who look like me should be rappers because they rap the best. And that wasn't very nice. It, it, it made me feel really bad. But then, but then I talked to my dad and he told me that I could be whatever I wanted to be. A study commissioned by Sesame Workshop of parents with kids ages 6 to 11 reported that 42% had personally experienced discrimination, nearly two-thirds of those with black children reporting racist incidents. So to help, Sesame created videos like Breathe, Feel, hey, Share to help Come kids on. have Honey, open conversations awkward. about race so and racism. Breathe. Uh, to calm down. Uh, feel notice how I'm feeling and say it, and then share. Tell a grown-up what happened. <laughs> For the grown-ups watching, a guide to help with those tough conversations. Elijah, I've had to have difficult talks with my kids, but it's particularly tough when you've got to talk to a, a four or five-year-old about race. How, how difficult is that? Yeah, we talk about being proud of things. We talk about things that make us unique, and we talk about some of the difficulties that can come. Were you surprised that after all this time, you still have to have those conversations? I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it, it, things do seem like they're getting better, but we want to make sure that we equip our kids with the tools that they need to mm -hmm. talk about and, and to exist in this world. Teaching these lessons through Sesame characters allows for a directness, a lack of nuance that young kids are looking for. It was important for us to make sure that people understood not only what was right, which is what we were modeling, but also what was wrong. And so this initiative is trying to really represent that for children and to use language that families and children feel comfortable with. And since Elijah and I share a fondness for forecasts, the weather report seems somewhat similar across the country. Uh, Ernie's Grove, Washington, 88 degrees. A perfect weather to float your rubber ducky. <laughs> that's right. Grover Beach, California, 88 degrees. And that's just super. Uh, Bird City, Kansas, 88 degrees. Oh, man, I'd like to get out to the park and feed the pigeons. 88 <laughs> degrees in Oscar, Minnesota. Well, hopefully it'll get some rain. I know Oscar would love that. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So he's a weatherman, huh? He's, that's right. I he's, love that. So, that's yeah, cute. 
And, you know, it really is what's so special about this. You need to be able to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And something like this helps parents, not just the kids, but the parents have those conversations. And it feels warm. It feels safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? It's a good way to start those conversations. Exactly. Watch this, and then, yeah. you know, we, can, we, can, we can talk. talk through right. It. So, and for all these resources to have conversations with your children, it's available for free through Sesame's In the Communities Initiative. And you can find a link to it on our website at today.com. We're back with another special edition of Buddy Up, where the four of us hang out together for some, some fun away from work in the past. Chanel Jones and I have teamed up as the news nerds versus <laughs> Alan Dillon, a.k.a. the weather wimps. Uh, the Wait, the last time we did a buddy up, I was pregnant? You're pregnant all the time. Yeah. No, the Pictionary. Oh, then Pictionary, yeah. right. Okay. Uh, They're less uh, impressive. Keep, keep moving. Okay. The Sorry. Wizards are first. The Wizards came out on top of yes. those ping pong and, and virtual Pictionary. So yeah. our first real life adventure after a year of Zooms, we went over to Chelsea Pier Fitness to right here in New York City to play some summer backyard games. We posted a poll asking who you think would win. Uh oh Let's find out if you were right. It was a gloomy afternoon in Manhattan for our first in-person buddy up in over a year. But we weren't about to let it rain on our parade. Now, this is the first time we've been together in person. It's to been buddy a while. Up. I'm so, so happy. We've got a little urgency because there's a big line of thunderstorms. Just saw that. We are the weather wizards. Oh my goodness. So let's get it going. <laughs> our first backyard game, a classic, cornhole. Yeah, how do you score cornhole? So I think, if I remember correctly, I'm usually pretty drunk. In the hole is three, okay. on the board is two. Off the board, half off the board, like if it's dangling, it's one. Are you taking notes on this? Well, yeah, to, to score. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> wow. Right, doofus. Oh, they calling this early? Oh! oh. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Look at me! Look at me! I'm Craig. I'm awesome. In a shock to everyone, the news nerds are up one nothing, but the stakes are getting higher in a supersized version of Connect Four. All right, here we go. You gotta get four in a row. Okay. Faster. Four in a row. Faster. Four in a row. Ready? Yes. Ladies first. Okay. Smart move. Mm mm. You don't want them to get anything, so don't put anything down because then they can. Mm -hmm. Good catch, good catch. Is this the least we've ever talked? <laughs> yeah. Ow! Yes! The old for? man's lost it! You did it The old man's it. lost it! He just wanted the game to end! Okay, one sec. Next. Things aren't looking great for both Team Weather Wizards or literally the weather. What There's what lightning and thunder what? coming. Is that becoming like a roll cloud? Look at that. With the storm approaching, it's time to get a move on for our grand finale, Can Jam. And it just hits the side, that's one point. You throw it, falls in, that's two points. Will Team Weather put any points on the scoreboard? Now, if it's above and you knock it in, right. you jam it, yeah. that's three points. If it goes straight in, ball. game over. <laughs> good try. That was good. Oh, this storm's getting good. Now, dishes. watch it. will go four, three. Okay, yeah. fine. Just hit the thing. Oh. Oh, close. So four, four. four. That might have gone in. All right, Good. four, four. First one to five. All right. Six. Oh, mean, mean can jam. Despite the weather wizard's can jam comeback, they were still down two to one. We had a choice. Keep going or stay dry. As you can hear and as we've seen, oh, God. Ta -da, we've got yeah. a line of pretty severe thunderstorms rolling in. It would so seem to be that way. I think it's time to call this buddy up. Why? Because I don't want to die. Uh, go news nerds, we won. Yay. You won. Yay! Ooh. Makes them feel better. Oh, <laughs> we heard you. She, she booed us. Yes, she, did. Boo she did. She did. Uh, you know, listen, I, and I love teaming up with Ellen, but I will say you are the most competitive human being. She is being. So I will, competitive. I, 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 I got a little annoyed at you because you 
handed over the game of Kansas Yes, Ford because today. you know what? You I have let so them few win. years left on this plan. <laughs> I was so, so I did not want to spend them electrocuted. I thought you were a little competitive. <laughs> I was so worried about the weather. We were like, oh, whatever. So, so, so can you imagine the headline? Like if Al Roker got struck by lightning? Yeah. So <laughs> can you imagine that? Yeah, so who yeah, wants to say that story? Let's see what Pete, we got a poll. <laughs> you guys went to our, our, our Twitter and uh, to, to, who thought who you thought would win. And so in far. fact, they oh, thought the wizard, that, weather right? wizards would win. Because we normally do. Well, I'm still not upset. this time. You, you phoned well, it in. Not it's, this time. You know what? But I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we got it right where we wanted to. They're fighting. King. They're fighting. They're fighting. No, all okay. right, there's another one good. coming soon. Uh, uh, thanks again, by the way. First of all, to photo Nate for those fantastic yes. pictures. Also, big thanks to Chelsea Pierce Fitness for hosting our games and hosting our victory party. As well. <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We Run 313 is about more than working up a sweat. I got a chance to talk with the two friends who are setting the pace. It's bigger than just getting out there and, and linking up and running. 32-year-old Lance Woods, a project manager for a local nonprofit, and 30-year-old consultant Joe Robinson are both enthusiastic runners from Detroit, introduced two years ago. One of my friends saw that we were both participating in the Miami Marathon, and then they put us together. Motivated by a love for their hometown, the Fast Friends created a running club in May of 2019, proudly boasting their area code called We Run 313. We Run Detroit! We Run 313! In our very first run, we had over 100 people show up. And they've kept it going, with an average 200-plus runners at weekly events, including their popular Two Mile Tuesdays. Joe, your slogan is connect, run, build. What does that mean? What it means is short for our mission, connecting like-minded individuals through running to build a happier, healthier community. We want to bring people together who want change. Change to them means seeing more runners who look like themselves at races. Let's say if it's 20,000 people, you might come across a sprinkle of black people in those races. And in a city like Detroit, that's 85% black. We don't see black people running. We have the power to change that. No! But the pair's primary goal? Helping residents reap benefits like lowering risk of heart disease and diabetes and improved mental health. How has this shaped you physically and mentally? Running has been the most transformative process. I mean, whether it was mild depression or anxiety, running has just helped me deal with those things in a different way. And I feel stronger than ever. I feel smarter than ever, obviously faster than ever. And I just feel like I'm who I'm supposed to be. Is this for people who are all ages, all running levels? And yes, it is for runners of all levels. We have people from six all the way up into 65, all paces, all sizes, all races. And the impact that we got from We Run 313, it surprises us to this day. All the way through, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. 
we, we're seeing lifelong friendships being formed. We're seeing people start businesses. We're seeing people not only start businesses, but meet their clients at our runs. We're seeing relationships. Hopefully we get a marriage out of the run club soon. <laughs> people come to us and tell us personal stories about how it's changed them from the inside out. The greatest thing is that you're not doing it alone. The beautiful thing about it is that you have a whole community of support. We're encouraging one another. If you've fallen behind, we got pace leaders that's going to say, come on, come on, you got this. Good job, good job. How did the pandemic impact your mission? When everything shut down, um, Joe and I, we was encouraging people, to, hey, this is a great time for you to take your health serious, get out there and get outdoors and run. We started a run solo campaign with COVID-19. It made us look at things from more of a, a macro level rather than just micro in, in the city of Detroit. And we started to engage people um, nationally. Today, Lance and Joe are committed to going the distance for those ready to follow their lead. If somebody told you that this was what you would be looking at two years ago, what would you have thought? <laughs> it would have been very difficult to believe. But now I know running has led me to believe anything is possible, especially when it's in the name of progress, when it's in the name of positivity, and when it's in the name of change. That's awesome. Yeah, what's really yeah. cool is they're going to use uh, run, We Run 313 as a form of activism. Last year, they ran to honor Ahmaud Arbery, the mm -hmm. unarmed black man who was killed while jogging in Georgia. Mm -hmm. They've also partnered with a, a local retailer to provide more than $10,000 worth of running shoes wow. to their, their community. And they want, they're they going to be working with the Detroit Pistons on, on a two-week fitness challenge. So they're expanding Great. and awesome. really bringing the mission forward. And okay. the mission and just so good for people's bodies oh, and yeah. minds Mental and health. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Roke Roke it. Come on! You How? know what? We had a lot of fun with a lot of help. Number five, and oh, so fine weather relay that got our NBC stations and affiliates involved from coast to coast. To pull this thing off, we tried to get the 10th Guinness World Record title. That's right. Rokerthon starts now. Here you go. We had a ball with Rokerthon 5. Here's the ball. Here's the beach ball, buddy. Hey, Al, thanks so much. Our Coast to Coast online weather reporting relay started our summer in the sunshine state. Kicking things off in Tampa. Thanks, Al. All right, we started out as low as 79 this morning. Making our way clear across the country from a coastline corner of Maine to sandy beaches of Waikiki. And everything in between, including lakesides, deserts, and mountains. It was an epic, one-of-a-kind summer forecast streaming live on Today All Day. 
getting a nice breeze. We've been sweating to the 90s and the triple digits. We have cloudy skies, a beautiful morning. Visiting nearly every state involving dozens of our affiliate family in an effort to set a new Guinness World Record. Got it! After three and a half hours, all right. Okay. Well, all right, ah! thank you. That's how fast you were. The space-time continuum. This is a brand new Guinness World Record Whoa! title. Rokerthon 2021, crossing the finish line. Wow. <laughs> Way to go. Done, our adjudicator from Guinness. Very it was cool. a lot of fun. And we did have, we had the beach ball thing. And of course we were throwing and people had their beach ball. Yeah. But uh, because of the time delay sometimes, uh, I'd have the beach ball yeah. before they threw it or, or vice so, versa. So Al, does each person, each one of those weather meteorologists mm -hmm. get a Guinness World Record yes, title? They, they all do? They all get a certificate. Wow. So they are part That's of cool. Where do you put thing? all of your Guinness certificates, by the way? I keep them right next to my Guinness beer. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's Emmys. But I mean, right. does it, so you just, you were kind of the ringmaster the in between guy. each thing. Moving along, moving along. So we were right there along the Jersey Shore. Uh, and a shout out to the nice people at McLoon's at Pier yeah. Village and uh, Long and, uh, Branch. I have an idea for Rokerthon That was real six. cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know yet. No, but I have an idea. Oh, what? Beat your own Rokerthon One record. Remember oh, when you broadcast for like 56 oh, 34 hours. hours? Oh, 34 oh, hours. That, was, that might have been she, our, my favorite. She's it was my. She's no, I'm not. Did Dylan put you up to this? No. <laughs> No, I just thought it was amazing. But also, yeah, it was scary. I forgot that, too. Yeah, so never mind. Fainted. I, yeah. Do the okay. sandwich thing again. All right. Yeah, yeah. Nobody understood that yeah. one. Well, again, so the entire that. thing was live on our streaming channel today all day, which, of course, can be found at today.com. And for updates on all our new programs, you can text all day to 34318. Uh, all day, was, all what night. What was that sandwich one again? Yeah, I don't know. Was that right? I quite the most that one. number of, of Don't shit. try to make it make sense. No, no. no, no I, no, but I you got the record. I, I, I did. The record. I did, baby. And this was a good, a good yeah. one. Hey, guys. Welcome today. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star, Katie Ledecky, in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's good. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We also, just so you know, have a game changer in our presence because Mr. Al Roker changing the weather game once again, adding another Guinness World Record title to prove it. You set the record yesterday, a world record during a coast-to-coast -coast summer weather relay. It was fun. We, we had over 60 NBC stations, a couple of colleges, yeah. okay. all doing weather. We were tossing a, a virtual beach ball to them in, instead of the baton. And so right. it kept going back and forth and back and forth. It was it was a lot of fun. That was the adjudicator there, uh, uh, Brittany Dunn from uh, Guinness. And we, we had a very specific job take? adjudicating. Well, yes, <laughs> the adjudicator. Well, I thought it was interesting uh, that, that you said earlier job? this morning. It is. She, Everybody who participated. She crosses the country? She's an yes. adjudicator. That is, you should do a profile on her. She's saying it. Yeah. It's great words. Well, you know, the, 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 in uh, in John Wick three, the person who oh who God. determined whether you stayed at the Continental or not was the adjudicator. The adjudicator so, called a John Wick I, I, I John Asia Wick Dillon III. was uh, was the adjudicator. Really? Oh, I way, shout, the... shout out to him. Shout out to the technical team as yes. well. Yes. That's, That's right. no small feat. That's right. And all of our producers. We've got uh, our producers and uh, we've got everybody. We had everybody.
everybody at their whole team, yeah. both uh, at Long Branch, uh, New Jersey, right. and here at 30 Rock, uh, making sure this all happens. We have so the educator right out in front. Yes. Yes. You just and like to all of the, I know, all the meteorologists around the country, do That's they right. also get a plaque? They also get a certificate. They really? are part of the Guinness cool. World Record. What about the adjudicator? Does the adjudicator, adjudicator does not get one because she hands it out. Oh, why, spell why wasn't I asked? <laughs> <laughs> it always are we really, comes back are we to really Wow. Oh, wow. And the I thing mean, is, the thing is, so close, she she's so serious. far away. Uh, <laughs> that's right. In fact, I, I, what's so amazing is just really a three plus hour drive north of here is Sequoia National Park. It, located in the southern Sierra Nevada, it is a gem that not a lot of people go to, but all need to make the trip. Recently, I took my 17-year-old daughter, Leela, with me to check it out, and it was so awe-inspiring, it knocked her socks off. Map at the ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, listen to that engine purr, baby. Let's drive nice and slow. I'm stunned that when I... Uh... <laughs> Asked Leela if she wanted to come on this trip. She said yes. I'm still surprised I'm kind of here. I'm a city kid, so like camping, I, I'm not good at that. There's a stop sign. Yeah. You should stop. I will. Leela heads right. to college in a year, so I'm thankful she's riding shotgun as we attempt our first ever camping trip. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even if she is a little squeamish. I think we're about 7,000 feet. That's so high. There's no guardrails. Dad, 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 why did you point that out? Well, it's just interesting. Why would you mention that to well, me? Well, I don't know. There are animals and trees everywhere. And I really don't like birds, because I'm afraid one will poop on my head. One hasn't pooped on your head. Yes, yes, it has. Oh, twice, it yeah, twice. that's right. General Sherman tree, is that where we're yep, going? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, now, this is pretty cool. So the tree, one of these sequoias fell and yeah. they hunt, they put a little walkway through it. This giant forest has the largest concentration of sequoia trees in the world, and the granddaddy of them all, General Sherman. His trunk alone weighs 1,400 tons. That's equal to 25 army tanks. Each year, General Sherman grows enough wood around the trunk that would equal a large tree. Oh, so it's still growing. It's still growing. Yep, still growing at 2,000 years old. We are looking at the Largest tree on earth. Wow. Yeah. Struck by their greatness, everyone seems to whisper down below until. Ah! Oh my gosh, that's a bird. A big one. It's a raven. It's not like you're going to be able to avoid them. All right, we're good. Ah! Oh my God. <laughs> you do know we're in the forest. Oh my gosh, it's right there. It's right over your head. Save yourself. Perhaps less intimidating for Leela, the park also home to American black bears just waking up from their winter naps. Oh my God, is that it? I see it, I see it. Wow. I can see her face. A giant sequoia, a bear, a thunderstorm, and sleet. All Quite the camping experience. It is. So you're right. It, wait, wait, say that again? Like you're correct? No, say that, say that again. No. You're right? No. Say that again? What I meant was, like, bear left, like, bear right. You're <laughs> right. I don't think I ever have really roughed it before. We camped out once in our backyard. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't last the night. No. Both doors facing desired direction. What does that mean? It's, this is the top. Do you blow it up? No, there's no, it, it doesn't inflate. <laughs> that's no, that's not, the, that's not correct. Yeah. Do you have a hammer? Nope. Where do these go? They look like nunchucks. Pole sections. Oh, good. Sleeting. How do you think this is going so far? Terribly. Terribly. Wait right there. Okay. Look what I found. <laughs> Check it out. Wow. Ding! Magic. Let's go catch some fish. Uh, nice cast. Dang. Fishing in the sleet. And plan B. Eat our hands. It's gonna hand. be uh, tube steaks and burgers. Who calls hot dogs tube steak? Have you started a fire? Never. I've never started a fire and had no desire yeah, to. Yeah, I don't really. Had want no to. reason to. So you get your newspaper and some don't cardboard. Don't do all of it. I don't think that's correct. No, you like here. No. You... 
That's not how you do it. That was drilled into us. Don't start yeah, fires. Don't. You, you Smokey see Smokey the bear. bear. Yeah, yeah, Smokey the Bear. It's like only you. He's pointing. He's looking at you. Don't do it. That is a fire. What do you say? Our next vacation, you, me, your brother and your sister and mom, go camping. For now, I shouldn't push it, but it's not a no. I'll take that as a maybe. So I got to tell you, it, it is one of the most awe-inspiring sights. You cannot even, the, uh, as great as the video was, and our camera guy, Ray Farmer, did a great job, uh, it doesn't do it justice on TV. Guys, you got to see it in Hi, Today All Day. We've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. Let's kick it off with Pop Start. Dylan is covering all the buzzy headlines for Carson, and she has all the details on the classic film, Field of Dreams, being turned into a TV show. Check it out. We're back, 8.35, Dylan is in for Carson, and it is pop start time. It is pop start time. Let's get right to it and start off with the Field of Dreams. Hot off last week's historic game between the Chicago White Sox and the New York Yankees on that famous cornfield in Iowa, Peacock has announced plans to create a series based on the iconic movie. Parks and Rec creator Mike Schur will helm the upcoming project, so you know it'll be good. It's set to reimagine the themes of family, baseball, Iowa, and the magic that made the 1989 Kevin Costner film a beloved classic. There's no release date yet, but for now, you can watch the original movie on NBC's streaming service. Peacock or watch Harry Smith's story yeah. anytime. Like today. <laughs> Get you also on Peacock. Exactly. <laughs> also on Peacock, true. All right, next up, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. The two actors just wrapped up filming on their upcoming action rom-com. It's called The Lost City of D. And Tatum took to social media to share how they celebrated the film's last day of shooting with a splash. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a picture right on Saturday night. Channing! Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully there's a cell phone in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like this Goodbye. is a pretty wow. darn good rom-com couple. The Lost City of D hits theaters next April. Next up, The Voice. The show is back next month for season 21. That's where Carson has been. <laughs> and ahead of the big premiere, they've revealed who will be teaming up with the coaches as battle advisors. Here they are. Camila Cabello is a battle advisor for Team Legend. <laughs> Jason Aldean! Hello, Kelly. Hey! You were right, it's Dirk Bentley! Woo! Wow! I'll take what he's drinking. I am so excited for everyone to meet my battle advisor and dear friend Kristen Chenoweth. I don't have words. You have no idea. She's so incredible, and I am so grateful, and I love you so much. I love you more, baby. Oh, <laughs> love you. you. Be good. It's picks. actually this is cool because this is a full circle moment for new coach Ariana Grande, who first met. Look at this picture. Oh, oh no, wow. no, she did not. Yes, yeah, she was Get a little out. girl. She saw Wicked on Broadway, oh. and mm. now they're working together. How cool is that? You can catch the coach and, of course, Carson on the season premiere of The Voice. It's September 20th right here on NBC. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Country Music Hall of Fame announced their newest lineup of inductees yesterday, making the class of 2021 mother-daughter duo Naomi and Winona Judd. <laughs> Can't believe they're not in it already. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Legendary singer, composer, and pianist Ray Charles. Yeah. Might come as a surprise. And musicians Pete Drake and Eddie Bayers. So the Judds, who first hit the country charts in 1984 with Mommy, He's Crazy, <laughs> have earned a collection of Grammy, CMA, and ACM awards for their decades of top 10 hits. And although you may not think country when you hear Ray Charles, oh, yeah. his 1962 yeah. album, Modern Sounds and Country and Western Music, cemented his influence on the mm -hmm. genre, so that makes sense. And steel guitarist Pete Drake and drummer Eddie Bayers make up the recording and touring musician category of inductees. Oh, congratulations. It's always shocking yeah. when you see it. It's like, wait, they're not in it? Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My exactly. mom used to play that Ray Charles album until she, she had to get a second copy. Oh, she, she played it so much. Oh, my. <laughs> loved her some Ray Charles. Wow, oh, I love that. <laughs> Coming up next on Today Talks, the third hour chats with football legend Brett Favre after this. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. 
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today in the third hour, the gang hangs out with football legend Brett Favre. He's talking about his new PSA. Check it out. All right, throughout his amazing 20-year NFL career, Brett Favre was an 11-time Pro Bowler, three-time league MVP, and a Super Bowl champion. Well, now the football legend is starring in a new PSA for the Concussion Legacy Foundation that's out today. It's urging parents to keep their kids out of tackle football until age 14. We have an exclusive first look. Mom, Dad, let's talk about tackle football. I just learned about CTE. The brain disease caused by repeated hits to the head. The more years I play, the more I'm at risk. If you put me in tackle today. By the time I'm a senior in high school, I'll have played 13 years of tackle football. I could already have CTE, and it will continue to destroy my brain even after I stop playing. So by the time I'm your age. I could be fighting depression, struggling to keep my thoughts straight. I could become violent, even towards my own children. When I'm your age, what will matter to me is not my youth football career, but that, like you, I'm a great parent and I can provide for my family. So please, keep me out of tackle football until I'm 14. Wow, so powerful. Good. Brett yes, Favre joining us now. Brett, good morning. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Hey, so it's so good seeing you, but we have to note that you don't know for sure if you've got CTE or not because it can't be diagnosed while somebody's still living. But you've talked about having occasional memory lapses, trouble finding words in conversations. First off, how are you doing these days? Well, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I can't complain. I, I don't know what normal feels like. Um, do I have CTE or... Uh, early onset. I, I really don't know. Uh, but I can't complain. I'm able to do and, and function uh, as I please for the most part. Uh, but, you know, concussions are a very, very, very serious thing. And we're just kind of like scraping the, you know, the surface of, of how severe they are and, and what are the repercussions. The PSA is so powerful and urges parents to wait until their children are 14 years old. Now, you don't have sons, but I can't believe, I didn't know you had three grandsons. I can't yeah. believe that. Um, but what would you say to them? You know, I know they're younger, but about waiting mm -hmm. to be 14 and encouraging parents to as well. Well, they're 11, seven and four um, and have not mentioned playing football uh, at all. Hmm. I am not going to mention it as well. If they choose to play, I will support them, but I'm not going to encourage them uh, in any way to play. I, you know, and I think that surprises a lot of people, but I, yeah. I'm just fearful of, of what, what concussions can do. Uh, and it only takes one. Maybe, you know, maybe I have had a thousand, just say for example, and mm -hmm. seemingly uh, are, are fine. Uh, in a, on a day-to-day -day basis, but the, the next person has one and has terrible uh, repercussions from it. So uh, you, you, it's, it's just too risky. And concussions are going to happen, whether it be the playground, in the car, elderly falling. 
Mm -hmm. uh, sports uh, and you name it, all sports have concussions. So I'm not going to encourage them to play, um, you know, in, until there's a treatment. Um, right now, it's all prevention. And as we know, you can only do so much and concussions are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you talk about prevention and certainly we've seen more rules, protocols uh, at the pro and college levels uh, designed to protect players. So do you think there are things that can be done to completely protect players? Are enough measures being taken or what, what else can be done to protect them? Well, I, I think a lot has been done and, and uh, a lot of good things, rule changes, um, but until there's a, a treatment, you know, the best way to avoid concussions is not play at all. And that, mm -hmm. of course, that's not going to happen. Um, and, you know, and I, I have been working with a company, Prevacus, for 10 years now. And, and it, it's been hard trying to break into the NFL or, or uh, similar markets to get research money and stuff to to come up with a treatment. And we believe that we're on the verge of, of having that treatment. But, in, you know, whether it's, it's Prevacus or someone else, it's going to take treatment uh, rather than prevention uh, to, to, I think, uh, you know, to, to take care of this problem. Mm -hmm. Well, Brett Favre, thank you so much for speaking out about it and uh, being at the forefront of it. I really appreciate it. And for folks to see the full PSA, they can head to our website at today.com. What a powerful conversation. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, we dish on the new photos from the set of And Just Like That, the Sex and the City reboot. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, we go unscripted. You know what I was just thinking? This yes. is so, okay, so I did a radio show yesterday and it was about going back to school. I was thinking about how kids are going back to school. Right. And I had Henry Winkler on, the Fonz. And I just love him anyway. And he said one of the things he learned, he talks at schools all the time. You probably would know this whole thing. He said, the one question I ask kids, little kids, that always gets a great answer is, what are you good at? What are you good at? What are you good at? And he said, it's so funny because kids, their hands shoot up immediately. Coloring, playing, you know, counting, whatever the thing is. And then I was thinking about how when we get older and people ask you, what are you good at? You almost won't say it. Yes. Or you back up a little. Oh, I don't know. Not very many. Yeah. But I just thought he said he said you, you have to remember that part of us. And I was thinking as we go back to school and as kids go back to school and I was just imagining and I thought about you, too, because you've you know, you obviously have been around kids like your whole yeah. life teaching when you were younger. But 
the idea that kids always know, and yet somehow, like, there are so many grown-ups trying to find their purpose. Yes. Like, why am I, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I good at? It's like, go we back always, to that go back. person. Yeah. What, it's, well, yeah. I, it's so funny that you say that, because when I was little, mm -hmm. and I, Mila's this way too, my mm -hmm. mom just knew that I loved kids. Like, yeah. I was a kid, yeah. but, but I was a third grader that wanted to hold all the babies. Oh. And I just took <laughs> Mila um, to Maine, and she met her little cousin, my cousin's yeah. baby, Dawn who's like the cutest baby you've ever seen. And Mila, the whole, we walk every night yeah. after dinner, just stood at the baby <gasps> and walked with the baby. And so my mom never pushed me to do anything. But she knew. What but when I got old enough, like high school age, she said, she took me to this place called the Austin Children's Shelter in Austin. And she said, I just want you to see it. It's this cool place, you know, no pushing. And I got there and of course, because I loved kids, I started volunteering there. I started working there on Sundays, and it was like the, my happiest, and it uh, led me to teaching. teaching. And I think it's like, I wasn't the type that was a great athlete necessarily, mm -hmm. or a great artist. Like right. my skills were a little bit harder to see maybe, yes. but my mom saw them and led me quietly that way. I love that, I love that. The other thing Henry Winkler said that I thought was so interesting was he had dyslexia when he was a kid yeah. and he couldn't read very well. And he, I said, do you have advice for parents who have a child who's like maybe a little bit slower or doesn't have the right, you know, can't yeah. quite learn the same way other kids learn? And he goes, do not tell them they know. They know they're slower. They know the kid next to him is getting it and the kid next to him, don't say, why don't you get it? Why don't you get it? He said, your job is to steady the ship. Yeah. And I thought that was so important. And to tell them what they, show them what they are what, good at and I said, or interested in. I said, did your parents do that? And he said, no, they didn't. Oh. He had to like push through, but he pushed through and look where he is. And he said, no, he said, I'm gonna be totally honest. But he does now, he says, I, I made sure that whenever, you know, whenever I saw a child who was struggling, it wasn't that they didn't know. No. They just didn't know how to learn the way that person was teaching them. And when you hear your kids yeah. for the first time say like, but I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. You, it oh breaks you because you're like, wait, you, but you can be, be and you are, are and it, maybe right. it's not all the same. I mean, I think not comparing your kids. people, ourselves, yeah. kids, anybody yeah. is like yeah. one of the hardest, yes, yet beneficial things we can do. Right. Don't, like yeah. if you, we can, if you spent your whole time looking at Instagram, comparing your lives oh to God. others. You know, have you ever like, when you go to a park, people are just like, how old is your daughter? Wait, she's speaking? Wait, how old's your son? He's not, oh, he's crawling. He's not eating that. How old, as they grow, yes. it's like one of those things. And it's almost inevitable. Cause you, you think, wait, wait, she's so much taller than him. Yeah. And they're the same age. It's like, who cares? I who? Oh, I love that Henry is Winkler. That, he is so smart and right wise. Right, that down. Okay, what okay, else? Pete, talking about people we love. Yeah. You have a girl crush on Sandra mm -hmm. Bullock. She's yeah. one of your favorites, right? Fave. Okay, fave, well, she, fave, was, fave, fave. she and Channing Tatum are actually shooting a movie. They have a new action adventure rom-com in the works. It's called The Lost City of D. What does that mean, I wonder? D. The Lost know. City of D. I'm, not, I'm hoping it's not something dirty. <laughs> <laughs> D. Well, they're hot together. Anyway, they celebrated wrapping the movie, and again, it's a rom-com. So Channing Tatum posted this video of those guys taking the plunge. So take a look. That is a picture right on Sunday. And those are their stunt doubles, by the way, that are already in the water. <laughs> They're like, anyway, Channing captioned the video this way. I don't have words for how special Sandy Bullock is. We definitely were made in the same lab and share a brain. I love you, girl. I'll, I'll ride your coattails anywhere, anytime, forever. Oh, that's so sweet. Doesn't that make you kind of want to get one? That's so sweet. <gasps> when you write that caption for her, too, though. Oh, yes, I would. You love her. I but love also, her. But also, it was kind of cool. They jumped into what looks like a fake ocean. That was cool. I, and, I can't wait to see it now. What is it? What's the you, lost city of D? Aren't you always longing for somebody to um, carry, carry you, you like a baby? They can't. No. <laughs> when Henry did, he pulled out his back. Okay, anyway, the lost city of D comes out. We don't know what D means. But we can't wait. But we can't wait. Maybe it's a lost city. Does D mean something? Does anybody we don't, know? We don't know. We're good. It's okay, a rom-com, so, maybe, so it's fun, good, because we need to laugh. We yeah. don't need, uh, okay. It comes so, out April of next year. So if you are in New York City or if you happen to come here on a trip or you're wandering the streets, everyone is on the lookout for something in New York City. Mm -hmm. And it's scenes that they're shooting from? Sex in the City. We keep talking about it. It's the Sex in the City re reboot. And the New York Post called it the hottest summer sport in New York City. Yeah, spotting them. So just days ago, Sarah Jessica Parker and Cynthia Nixon, look at them. 
they were filming together on some steps. Is that the library? I think it looks like the library. It looks like the public a little library. Bit. I see extras walking behind. Look, she has a little bottle. They look cute. Oh, my gosh. And look at her outfit. I know, she looks cool. Could you pull that off? You girl, I've worn this same jumper <laughs> about seven days in a row. Once I threw a t-shirt over it and wore it again. Um, okay, Once. okay, where else? Once. Once. Sarah Jessica Parker and Chris Noth have also been posting some photos from filming. Wow, so Carrie and back Big together. back together. Okay, there are theories circulating online about Big. Does he go to white collar prison? Does he, he did. die? Why are they spotting these? They're in bed hanging out. That's not well, prison. Well, maybe. That's a very chic prison if it is one. With that wallpaper behind him? I, no, maybe he died. Maybe that's the last night before he goes off to jail. That could be. Why are you going so well, dark I don't with know. Sex of the City? They I could don't know. be getting married. I know. It's just kind of fun to know because it just reminds you of New York before yes. everything went Wacky. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like enjoying the streets and the crowds. And, and, and it all is the, the way that, that way now, too, it feels yes, like. You know, it does. It was, last night I was here and people were sitting at restaurants. Yes. All the outdoor seating makes it feel like it yes. we could be somewhere else. It's yes. really cool. Yes. All right. Speaking of reboots, Peacock mm. just confirmed it's developing a field of dreams. TV series. This is a biggie. This is fresh off last week's Field of Dreams Major League game. It was in Dyersville, Iowa. That's where the iconic movie was shot. By yeah. Kevin Costner is I fine. Know. And that, oh, I love that you went there. I thought oh you were going to say it was great it's in this amazing. film. Amazing. But, but this something... movie, I, I told Willie I watched this movie with the girls during the quarantine. Oh, you did? It's a lot to explain. Because How it's like, yes. they're, they're like, so is that heaven, mom? What, where do they go in the fields? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did they like it? They I liked think. it. And, and you know that Willie and I ate one of those hot dog apple pie concoctions that Wait, they served what? at the game. Yes. Wait, you did something really fun without me? I'm sorry, but Wait, it, apple pie hot it dog? It was an apple pie hot dog that Chef, what was, what? Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. <laughs> Fieri. Guy Fieri. No, no T. Fieri. With no, car. it has T's, y'all. No, it's Fieri like a Ferrari. Oh, Fieri. Fieri. <laughs> he created this hot dog, meets an apple pie, but I have to tell you, was it Willie? Awesome. It was delicious did, at the time. Did Willie we just wolf it down? We both did. It was I know gross. How you eat, but does Willie eat like that too? <laughs> <laughs> but then later in the day, well, Willie texted me and goes, "Is it still lingering?" I go, "Major." I mean, I couldn't eat for days. All right, kiddos, time for unscripted. Okay, you just took a little vacation, mm -hmm. and there's a new question that I guess the cut is posing, which is, which should cut? you work out? The cut is magazine. Oh, okay. Should you work out on vacation? vacation. So, did you work out? Um, I did. I, I, you know what? What's funny? I, every morning, I feel like I have to. It's not like I'm obsessed, but I need like 30 or 45 minutes to do something yes. without anybody around, like without my kids, without Joel, without anybody, my family, do my thing, and then I can shower and re I'm ready for the day. Yes. I think if I don't do it, I feel like I, I wake up, I'm sluggish, I don't feel kind great. Kind of grumpy. Grumpy, do you? Well, it's so, I do. But yeah. it's funny because the article from the New York Magazine's uh, The Cut mm -hmm. says, don't even think about working out on vacation. What does the writer say? The Tell writer me. says, vacation minutes are the most precious. Don't burden yourself with the guilt and obligation of trying to squeeze in a spin class or go for a run. No, no, no. Because it's not, because here's what you're doing. You're blobbing out the whole time you're on vacation. Exactly. So it's only 30 minutes of your 24-hour day. I think you have to make yourself feel good before you make yourself feel, feel bad. <laughs> I think Meaning that's good. go for a run before you yes. eat the ice cream or yes. before you yes. order a drink. Yeah, and I just think it also like it puts me in a good headspace. Like it's not like I'm doing it I so I can have toned abs. Might I be care unusual. Less. We like love I love to. I, do I love too. it. And I, it's so funny because when I'm injured, I'm like, what do I do with my time? It also feels like I love to go for like long walks, long walks with my sister or do something with the kids that feels active. Me too. I love the feeling Ugh. too. And boy, they know when I when I haven't worked out. Everybody knows. Grumpy. They're like this. Grumpy. Get on the bike. Go do whatever it is you do. <laughs> Take some Calm time. down. Today Talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. 
Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today all day. You know what? I was just thinking about Jason Mraz, yeah. and um, we just did a piece on him and how he is like helping out all of these kids. And I think the thing that struck us more than, I mean, he was doing incredible things, but when you watch a kid, physically watch a kid gain confidence. Yes. Like that's what we were doing. We were watching these young kids who were shy or as the as the young girl was saying, she, she had trouble making eye yes. contact or verbalizing what she wanted to say. But Jason Mraz gave them confidence, put them on stage. They did their dances. They realized they could. You know, it's like that moment you realize you can. It's so interesting because you started the show today talking yeah. about that interview with Henry Winkler, yeah, which yeah. stayed with you. Yeah. About giving kids the confidence. Yes. Like, confidence. know they're good at something. Because not, there are kids that are just great at things. Yes. And then there are kids where it's like a little bit harder to figure out what it is you love. Right, trying to find out. It's like, I remember, this sounds so dumb, but when I played basketball in junior high, I remember I hit a shot. And I remember what it felt like making it. And someone said, oh my gosh, you're good at that. Now, was I good at it? Probably not. Was yeah. it the luckiest shot? Probably. But I thought that. So, and it I was, was tall. enough to have you yeah. continue in so something. Like, You're tall and you made that shot. I was like, oh my gosh, I can do it. So I practiced, I went to camp, I dreamt about it. Like, you know, it became one of those self-fulfilling things. It's so funny because I, it's, it's, and it, I think it kind of shows the type of kids yeah. we were, that we weren't the kids that were great in everything, no. or at least I wasn't. No. And I, I had a teacher, that. a fourth grade teacher, maybe a fifth grade teacher, Miss Cunningham, and I wrote a short story, and I started really loving to write, and I loved reading. I loved English yeah. always. I was an English major. And she said to me, like, you're a good writer. She said you're And good. she had to look past, like, because I wasn't a great speller. I wasn't <laughs> a great, great student, but she you saw that, writer. like, my ideas were there. And she said, you just got to keep reading. Read all the great books. And you know and what? And hearing that. You must have been like, like one sentence back straight my up. Life. Yes. And you know what's funny? Even when you get older, you need confidence. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was working in Illinois at a local station, and I always thought my stories were so so. They were okay. Like I would interview people, and you, you'd write and edit your own piece. Mm -hmm. So I went to this um, seminar, and it was with tons of people from Chicago, all the big markets. I was in Moline. Anyway, they were like, so everyone submit a story. So I wrote my story and I turned it in. And it was like hundreds of people there and I'll never forget it. The guy went through and he goes, this is the one I like. And he read my story and I'll never forget it because I, I promise you, mine would have been, I would have thought in the bottom yes. third. I freaked out. But even then, you need someone to say, this is how you use natural sound. This is how you pick the sound bite. This is how and you write you the... And when you left... I was like meaning? high as a kite. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I was like, he picked mine? Like, why did he pick mine? But I think even as grown-ups, It's as so we true. Age, and when you hear need... things from anybody, yeah. like, if Henry's like, gosh, so you just handled that, like, really well yes. with the kids, or I heard him, like, say to a friend, she's a really good mother. Like, oh. hearing that... Uh, I don't say that to myself. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's yeah. really interesting, like, how yeah. we speak to ourselves versus how, right. what other people say. And the influence they have, because all of a sudden we're like, oh, I oh, did I am. that, right? Oh, I, I am. And, I, so, and you, so, you know you, you are, know you are deep but. down, but it's like, I wish that we could talk to ourselves yes. the way that, like, Miss Cunningham or that person. Yes. Like, why can't we talk to ourselves the way that the kindest teachers do? I know. Boy, the way. That, okay, but, I'm should we work on that? Yep. Something else to work on. Okay, that's Add it. the list. All right, that's it for this episode <laughs> of Today Talks. Keep watching. we got more today all day.
let's dig into this because there are some people who, through this pandemic, everything has kind of been on hold. But for you, I mean, I'm reading about all of these things. I mean, projects, startups. I mean, what has this year been like for you navigating COVID and creating? I mean, like so many of us, it it put me on pause. uh, And for me, it was just about kind of distracting myself and at least being able to control the work that I did. You can't control anything in the outside world. And I think once I accepted that, I was just like, what I can control is the work that I do, my output, the projects that I'm involved in, who I can help. And that's that's kind of what I made my, my mandate for mm. the past year. And thankfully, you know, production started ramping back up in some instances, people started to figure out how to shoot things safely, how to gather safely. And once once uh, those parameters were met, I was like, okay, I, I can work. Hmm. So let's go back a little bit for people who may not know your story. A lot of us do, but some people may not. And they see you now and they see this glamorous, successful person um, on their screens. But I know that it hasn't always been that way. And you're very unapologetic about talking about that. I just read this morning that sometime in life you mispronounced Tupac's name. I don't even know how that's possible. I don't even know. Well, it's possible when you're a nerd like me. Yes, that <laughs> was a real thing. But tell me this, do you still feel like you're that awkward girl or do you feel like you've blossomed? Like, where are you now? Where's your headspace? Yeah, I mean, I definitely still feel that way. I constantly just have to accept that this is what I'm gonna be. I, I was just saying the other day, like when people meet me, it's it's equally devastating for me, for them to, to think that like, oh, I'm meeting somebody cool. <laughs> and then, <laughs> to like watch them see like, oh, she doesn't know how to be a person. And like, oh, what <laughs> what is this? Um, it's, it's just, you know, I think I've just come to accept that that's who people are gonna get. But it's been, it's been a journey. And I think part of my journey has been that acceptance of just mm-hmm. like, yes, I'm this socially uncomfortable, awkward person, and I'm gonna just put it in my work. And it's really comforting to know that there's so many other people out here like that. I think I've just kind of found my community by by accepting it too. When you launched Awkward Black Girl, I was just looking, was it 10 years ago? It was wow. 10 years ago. We just had our 10th anniversary, February 3rd, which is wild. Did you ever imagine what it could become? Some people say, yes, I could. Others say, no, this is beyond my wildest dreams. What about for you? I'm others. I'm definitely like this, I made this, just so I could stop talking mess. Cause I was complaining a lot about like what I wasn't seeing on TV. And, mm-hmm. you know, this was creating a character and a world to be like, it, if I can do it, then I know mainstream TV can do it. And so I was even surprised after the first episode, then I was like, oh God, I gotta write more and catch up. So to, to see the impact that it's even had 10 years later, to see what it's, you know, birth. I, I did try to use it as a way to kind of get into the industry. And so that was something where I was like, it happened, um, but not like this, no. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
It's so interesting. I watched your master class yesterday, which was phenomenal because I didn't know what Thank to expect you. with those. Sometimes I didn't know, is somebody just going to kind of give us a little speech? Or are they really giving us the nuggets, the X's and O's? And you really kind of zoom in and it made me recognize that this is a craft and you have been at this for a very long time, even before Awkward Black Girl. I mean, this is something it seems like you've always wanted to do, isn't it? Definitely. I've always wanted to tell, tell stories and um, have kind of learned by doing. Thank you for watching the class, by the way. I'm Issa Rae, and this is my master class. It was such an incredible experience to even do it because, you know, when you're in it, you feel like, well, what am I going to teach? Because I'm still learning myself. Um, but the team there and the producers there really extract like everything that you've been through and everything that you 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 do know and i was like okay i do feel equipped to teach this and at least you know i'm all about sharing all the resources all the tools that i have so that you can make it and i didn't have formal training and so i feel like this class is very friendly for people who are just like you know what i'm gonna i want to try it and i want to see what i can do and i don't know where to start so um shout out to masterclass for giving me a chance to teach you know what you talked about that uh, resonated with me that I didn't even realize is when you talked about the 90s, um, you know, there were so many sitcoms that highlighted African-American families and all, and not even just families, living single or what have you. And I thought about it when you were talking about it, it was like, there was a time when I wanted to be Rudy Huxtable, I would do my hair like yes. Rudy, then I wanted to be Denise, then I wanted to go to yes. Hillman, and now if somebody calls me Claire, I'm like, <laughs> You talk about the power of representation, right? And so now we're in a new phase of life, which I guess is why, you know, Insecure speaks to a lot of people. But talk to me about that, because there was a time when those shows went away in the 90s that we kind of had a void. Um, yeah. what, what was that impact for you? That impact was like, what happened? Why? Like, I know that these shows are possible to exist. And, you know, reality television less reality television star. it's really entertaining but that ended up kind of being the sole representation for black people black women mm. and that was kind of disturbing to me because it didn't show how mass multifaceted we are i didn't know a lot of people um my friends weren't like the women that were portrayed on television and again it's entertainment and that's not a knock on those women but there were we were just more than that and i missed seeing our simple stories on screen and to see that you know, when I think about white representation, it's been like, th that's the, the gap, like it, they get everything. And so I wanted, I wanted that for us too. And so I think that a lot of people were feeling that way at the time. And I think that's why you even see a renaissance now of, of so much content and we, we have such a long way to go. Are we in a renaissance? Like sometimes people talk about the Harlem Renaissance or different phases in history. Are we in a content renaissance, you think, with you know social media and YouTube? I mean, there's so many places where you can find content. We're in a content renaissance for sure. I don't know if it's a black renaissance. I, I, it's definitely not a people of color rena renaissance because we were barely scratching the surface there. Um, but it's coming, it's developing. And I think, you know, with all these different platforms and the way of streamlining it, there's only so much you can continue to, to, to offer the same type of show over and over again. So you have to expand the stories. We're hungry. What happened in between Awkward Black Girl and Insecure? Is there a time in your life that we just don't know about? I mean, was there a hustle there? Or was somebody like, knock, 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 hey, you're great, let's put you on. Like what, what was in between there? Lots of messing up, lots of learning lessons, you know, between Awkward Black Girl and Insecure, I got offers to turn Awkward Black Girl into a television show. But, you know, we had so much online or some people just wanted to replace the cast or they just didn't understand it or they wanted to franchise it to make it international. When in one instance where they were like, we could do Awkward Indian Boy, we could do Awkward Israeli Girl. And I was like, that's missing the point. Then I had an opportunity to work with ABC and mess that up, which I talk about in my master class is like, oh, this was this was my one shot to transition from YouTube to television and I messed up. I was creating more web series. You know, I got to work with Tracy Edmonds on a show. So there were so many things. I wrote a book. There were so many things that I was doing in between that time just to um, kind of exercise my creative muscles and stay afloat. But 
I was definitely afraid that kind of awkward black girl was all I was going to end up having to offer. How do you know when something is right? It's the right project because there's certainly no shortage of offers at this point. How do you know in your gut this is something? I very much make what I want to see. I participate in uh, what I want to be a part of that comes that's that's down to every television and film project that I do. Do I want to see it? Do I want to be in it? Do, do I think my friends would find it funny? That's every business, you know, that I take part in. So that would be like with, with the coffee shops. I ride out of coffee shops. I wanted a neighborhood coffee shop up and I had to leave. So, you know, um, invested in Hilltop and now we have one in Inglewood and V Park and mm -hmm. Eagle Rock. And uh, those are my, those are my communities. I think about, you know, hair is such a big part of my life. And so, you know, having Sienna Naturals has been an incredible experience because it's, you know, it's about like taking care of my hair, which is something that I've learned. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that I take part in, uh, is is something that I feel that I would need and and use and uh, want to see. Mm, speaking of hair, can we talk about how insecure your hair is different there for a while? Like every scene, I was like, "Ooh, what's she gonna do now?" Which has nothing to do, I guess, with the plot, but it's just <laughs> not at all, right? But that's what I'm saying. There are just so many ways that you're speaking to people without even speaking. If that makes any sense. No, I wish I appreciate, you know, I have to shout out my hairstylist, Felicia Leatherwood, who is really like, it's been a hair journey. You talk about 10 years, you look at my hair and Awkward Black Girl, I had just shaved my head because I was tired of it. And with Insecure, we really wanted to just showcase the, the different things that you can do with natural hair because, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to representation, it's just, it's so hard um, to see 4C hair, 4D, like, all of these specific textures of hair aren't necessarily seen as beautiful. Um, and so being able to showcase that and also, you know, have a, a hair product where it's like encouraging being able to take care of textured hair just felt like it goes hand in hand. It's just, it's always been a passion of mine and it's been a part of who, my identity. So wait, the hair product, are the products out now? The products are out now. Sienna Naturals are in Target and Nordstrom. You can go wow. pop them. Um, I, that if you use a happy shampoo and you aren't happy afterwards, if you're not like, oh my hair, God, what <laughs> happened? Then um, complain, but you won't. Okay. So yes, you can get them at Target and Nordstrom. Um, shout out to the founder, Hannah Jope who uh, is just, I watched her create those products in her kitchen. What, like, it has to be 10 years ago now? No, about eight years ago now. And to see her develop the products over time with textured hair in mind and make them the best that they can be it has been incredible. And now, you know, on set, that's all I use. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. 
And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So before we start a new chapter, we're closing the chapter after five years or five seasons on Insecure. I guess there's nothing I could say that would reverse that. <laughs> I'm like no. sad. I'm sad. No, you're going to make me sad if you reverse it. What, what are you talking about? Mm -mm. Because there's so many of us who don't. Well, what are we going to do? <laughs> it's like we wait for it. I guess, are you ready to let it go? I'm definitely ready to let it go. I knew that I wanted to end it after five seasons. And I feel like I'm really proud of this season that we're telling now, like that we're shooting now. It's it's so much fun and it's made me appreciate the show in a different way. Um, but yeah, so I'm Issa ready. Lawrence gonna like trot off in the sunset somewhere? Is that what you want? I think so, yes. That's what I would like, That's Issa. Well, I guess you just have to watch That's season what five. That's I would like. Do you worry what people, I guess I'm sure you don't. I probably know the answer to this question. I mean, people are, are invested. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah. Like they yes. are, almost sometimes it's like y'all, that they're acting. I mean, but it's, <laughs> right? Do I worry? Yes, I worry. Because I know like it's, it's a story that, you know, is going to come to an end. And even in the room, it's, it, 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 you know, it's hard. It's hard not to think about that. I think the first four seasons, it was easier to be like, okay, whatever, tune the audience out. It's great that they love the show. They have their opinions, but we just want to tell a story. But to end the show is different. So yes, I worry, but like, the story at the end of the day is gonna be my story. So, so do you know? So it's is it done? Like, do you know? It's it's done. I mean, yeah, we're shooting it right now, but okay. it's done. But the what's gonna be is gonna be. What's good? <laughs> I'm like yes. trying to look your big beautiful brown eyes. I'm like trying to see if I can see any kind of like. Lord, what's gonna, gonna be is gonna be. <laughs> okay. I read, it's interesting. I read that you and Insecure showrunner, uh, Prentice Penny, met every year over poolside drinks, and you were talking about uh, the upcoming season. RIP poolside drinks. We did not do that this season. We had to do poolside Zooms. Oh. And it was. You know, we made we made the best of it, but I love that man so much, and he's taught me so much about running a room. Like even I'm working on a new show now, and the showrunner is also someone who has come out of the insecure room, and we've learned so much from him and his process. And he's really just inspired, kind of a I think a legacy of writers. Um, but yes, I, I I think that an insecure will not die because it will produce so many other. That's shows. A good way to put it. That's the good way to put it. Okay, so let me pivot um, as we come to a close here. For as much as you put yourself out there, you're also very private in many ways. Where is your line? I remember, was it the cover of, I think it was Essence, and people were like, ooh, she, he's a hat on a ring, and you know, everybody's, you know, looking. Yep. Where's your, where's your line? Uh, that is my line. I think uh, I'm, I'm always like, I don't want people to know too much like that, like that. I don't want to put out there. I think just via characters. I also don't want people, I want people to be able to separate me from the characters, which I made a, a huge mistake about with, with Insecure by even naming the character Issa. Cause, you think so? You know, people call me cheater. They, they like, there's so many things that they just, my way of like, they're just calling the character name, which happens to be me. And, you know, it is a past version of me. So in that way, I would have named her like Isabel or some <laughs> other name. I should have done better, but um, yeah, I think, you know, my personal life is just that, it's personal. Mm. So then what has been, I guess, if I were to say the biggest surprise of your career so far, what would it be? <laughs> you know, I, I came into this like wide-eyed, excited about, you know, um, my heroes and to know that they're, uh, I have not been disappointed by a hero. I will say I have I have such a great community of women in this industry who have embraced me, who have you know uh, tried to guide me, who have uh, served as blueprints, and the women that I mess with deeply believe in and want the best for our communities. And I love that. So that's been a surprise because you hear like, don't meet your heroes, people are fake. And um, I have not had that experience. So that that has been a pleasant surprise. 
And it seems like you're a giver. I mean, you kind of touched on this already, but you know, there's some people who almost feel like they hide the wealth or the information. I feel like for you, what's your thought? You know, you just put it out there and because what's for you is for you or how do you navigate, especially with other women? Yeah, I'm definitely like, why am I holding on to this, these, like this knowledge, these resources? Is whatever I've never believed in that it's always been so ugly for people to be like well I got it I don't know you gotta figure it out <laughs> and it's so much more fun and rich when you know we can all kind of work alongside each other and help each other out and um in many cases people have done the same for me of just like hey I applied to this this program mm -hmm. you should apply to um and so yeah I think that that's just a, a natural philosophy for me Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You have so many projects going on. <clears throat> when you lay your head down on the pillow at night, are you able to push it all, put it all on hold, pause? Is it all going? Um, it's definitely ongoing, but at night, like I fall asleep, I can fall asleep anywhere. I'm a person, I don't know about you, like fall asleep it's on the right plane. Now, actually. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. No problem. Um, <laughs> so that's that's kind of me. I have done this thing. I had to do this thing where I, you know, I, I listen to sounds at night. Okay. I sh changed from like listening to the ocean and rain to listening to. Don't say bugs. Podcasts. No, ew, no. Well, no. I didn't know if you're gonna be like girl crickets. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I can like dream about them. Yeah, in my no, house. I didn't know. I didn't know podcast was gonna come out. My bad. I interrupted. Podcast. So you're listening. <laughs> Crickets is a good guess. Yeah. Joke. Maybe I will try that. No, no, Crickets no. have a smoothie. <laughs> oh, so you're listening to words of wisdom. Yeah, in some cases, or words of destruction. You know what's also really soothing for me, oddly enough, and I think I just saw like an article headline about it murder crime documentaries i don't know what it is i know okay i should really but that. no but you're not alone honestly look i post episodes of dateline on own sometimes and i get more people saying girl i saw you on doing dateline and i'm like the spouse did it like y'all keep watching it <laughs> like, the spouse, no, that's literally my genre is the spouse did it it's that's i think that's what's comforting about it i know how this is going so you're, so you're not alone all right so here's here's a question for you then how do you recharge when you have so many projects you have so much going on what fills your cup what fills my cup is prosecco or wine fair enough um, literally so that is yep that definitely helps to relax me um i i love like listening listening to a good book reading a good book um watching television not necessarily movies i like to be immersed in a world and that's kind of where i um, that's where I live. Like, I love, I love that. That's there, how I relax. So then it's when we see people make it, sometimes you assume that the people, you know, never have to worry again, or they feel like, oh, I've made it. But clearly it seems like you are always evolving. I, I am, but it's, it just comes from a, 
desire to want to keep learning and want to see what else I can do to try to do more. Um, so that's just kind of been, I think that's a part of me. All right, lightning round, last thing, you ready? Rapid yes. fire. Favorite character you've ever written? Favorite character I've ever written is baby voice Darius in Awkward Black Girl. I'm sorry? Derek? Darius. Mantra you live by? A give to the world your best and the best will come back to you. Oh, I like that. Guilty pleasure? Crime documentaries. <laughs> Favorite way to unwind? I mean, uh, drinking, drinking, drinking. Have you ever done lavender infused simple syrup? No. Ooh. Life, you just get some fresh lavender and you just boil it and make it a simple syrup and you pour that in the Prosecco. Ooh, I just learned that for rosemary and didn't think to do it with anything else. So I'm a hundred percent going to do that. Lavender. I love that. Lavender. You're welcome. The TV character you're most like. Uh, Khadija from Living Single. Oh, Khadija. I haven't heard that in a mm -hmm. while. TV character you most want to be like? Denise from Cosby Show. Yeah, I dress like. Denise was kind of aloof. Oh, but okay. I, I want I want Denise's fashion. Who I want to be like? I would guess I would say like Maxine from Living Single. Maxine. Living Single was... It was, was like, monumental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I want to live. I didn't know that that existed. Like you could live single on your own. Don't let me get started. Okay. <laughs> Text... Texting or talking? Texting. No, talking in person. I'm sorry. Talking. talking in person. Last, oh, four more. Who inspires you the most? Um, Debbie Allen. Oh, yeah. I was able to tell her how much I loved her the other day. She's incredible. She's everything. Best hype music? Um, Little Scrappy, No Problem. Ha <laughs> ha. Favorite food? Gumbo and Chebu Jin. Oh, favorite drink? Prosecco. Place you Prosecco your, with vodka. Cheers. Place you do your best thinking? In the shower. Last three, word to live by for 2021. Tomorrow's a better day. Ooh, amen. Thing you're most looking forward to post pandemic? I cannot wait to throw a lit ass house party. Cannot wait house parties remember those yes I the do. last last question what's the one question you never get asked that you wish someone would ask you do you want to get some food on me <laughs> what i just wish people would ask that more like do you want to say the question again do you want to get some food on me Oh, like on me. Like, like I'll, I'll pay you. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the other way works too. <laughs> I could have said that better. It needed some commas. Well, because you remember the Sex in the C City episode with Samantha and the sushi? I don't know. If yes. You Wasn't so, that in the movie? When she oh, was maybe. No, you're right. It was a movie. No, you're right. It was in the movie. And so... I yeah. was like, is that a scene? Like, are you trying? I mean, to <laughs> it could be. I'm not mad at that either. If the food is free. <laughs> if the food is free. Thank you so, so much. I hope I talk to you again. Like you were so good. I hope I see you in person again. And thank you so much for this interview. For Thank real. you. God bless. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, Ambush Makeovers.
look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today All Day. Hello, today all day. Summer's almost here, and if you're looking for the perfect way to welcome warmer weather, my pal Anthony Contrino is sharing his favorite al fresco meal. Not al roca, but al fresco. We're talking juicy pork milanese, peppery arugula salad, an easy antipasti, along with Uncle Pasti, with olives, and of course, a classic Italian cocktail to wash it all down. Mmm. Summer is just around the corner. It's not one of my favorite seasons, but my birthday's in there, so I'll allow it. Anyway, it is gonna be really nice to be able to dine outside with friends. So today I'm whipping up the perfect al fresco meal. I'll be making delicious orange rosemary marinated olives, the juiciest, crispiest pork milanese you've ever had, topped with a nice fresh salad. And then of course we need a cocktail or two. I'll be making a Negroni and an Americano. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the new set of Saucy. Let's get cooking. I'm gonna be making some delicious orange rosemary marinated olives. We love olives in my family. We have them out for every holiday as part of an antipasti. I'm gonna be using orange and rosemary because those are two flavors that I like and that work really well together. So first things first, I have two different kinds of olives. My favorite, Cato Vitrano, which are super buttery, and then a little bit more of a pungent flavor with Kalamata olives. I like the two to balance off each other and they're really pretty when mixed up together later on. For the marinade itself, we'll start by adding some oil to about a third of a cup. You can eyeball this into a small saucepan. So first things first, an orange. Any sweet orange will do. This is a plain navel orange, and I'm just cutting a few strips off. Then I like to go back with a knife and carefully, don't hurt yourself here, Similar to like filleting fish, remove the bitter pith. We don't need any bitter flavor in our marinade over here. So you can see all the white part is gone and you're left with just the beautiful, super fragrant skin. Right into the pot that goes. Take your time. Better off being safe than sorry with this. and the last one into the pot. Don't want this orange to go to waste. So I'm gonna take that sweet, delicious juice and we'll add that to the pot as well. That'll add a little bit of sweetness to our olives. Next up, garlic. What, what does this happen every time? Six takes later. I'm gonna grab two cloves. You can buy them peeled already, which will save on the aggravation. Okay, so just thin slice, eighth of an inch, even thinner if you can, without hurting yourself, into our pot. Then let's add some more flavor. A bay leaf. I'm gonna add a pinch of red pepper flakes. I'm not a big spice person, so I literally just add a tiny little pinch. Last but not least, some fresh rosemary. So I'm gonna cut off a couple of sprigs here and pull off about half of the leaves or just kind of break them. I just like the way it looks when it's in there. It's still gonna permeate that oil. So I'm literally just waiting for the edges to just sort of start to simmer as I'm doing this. It'll go pretty quickly. We're not looking to cook, we're looking to infuse. You'll know it's done when it gets nice and fragrant. Similar when you add garlic and onion to like a saute pan and it's getting there, it's smelling really good already. So you can see it's starting to simmer a little bit. So I'm gonna cut the heat and then simply just pour it right on top of our olives. Make sure you get 
all of this flavor. Leave no speck of garlic or rosemary behind. Okay, now I'm gonna let this sit out at room temperature for a couple of hours. So every now and then, every time you pass it, just pick it up, give it a tossy turn, zhuzh it up, get those olives coated nice with that oil to help marinate it, and give those olives some time to steep. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Chuck Todd cast free wherever you get your podcasts today is now a podcast available every morning listen wherever you get your podcasts if there's one thing that I can eat for dinner every night it's pork milanese or any milanese chicken anything pound it thin fry it crispy I'm gonna eat it I'd probably even enjoy shoe leather if it was fried. So right here I have, from my butcher, you can get these at most supermarkets, some nice, beautiful, thick pork loin chops that are boneless. I'm gonna pound them nice and thin so that every inch of this milanese is absurdly crispy. Get yourself a generous sized sheet of plastic wrap. And this is where the fun begins, guys. This may look a little scary, but I promise you it's not. We're going to butterfly these chops. So, I'm gonna place a chop on the plastic wrap, taking a really sharp chef knife. I'm going to find the center, and I'm gonna cut it open like a book. Work slowly, deliberate, steady, slices and this is just to help get it nice and thin and I'm just slowly going to start peeling it open and there you go if you skip this step and just start pounding you're gonna be there all day and your meats not gonna be as tender so truly don't skip that step be sure to leave a little slack around so that our chop has room to grow. Get yourself one of these fun toys and go to town. Watch your fingers, don't do what I almost just did. There you have it. It's about a quarter of an inch thick, and we have a gorgeous big cutlet now that is for one person. Just keep going. your kids or your boss piss you off today, this is the perfect meal to make at the end of the day. This 
sounds even better. You can do this with chicken breast. I love it with chicken. You can do it with beef. If you don't have time to go to the gym, this is the perfect activity for you. Is this what it feels like to exercise? <laughs> One to go. That looks great. As easy as that. I am going to wipe down, sanitize, clean my hands, and then we're going to dredge these guys up. Okay, now that that's set up, let's start getting these bad boys breaded. So, free them from the plastic wrap. Look how great that looks. Nice and thin. And when cooking, you wanna make sure you're seasoning in layers. You never wanna just finish with salt because it's just sitting on top and doesn't have time to absorb. Also, when cooking, you want to do all of one action at once. It keeps things neater, it's quicker. This is the bulk of the seasoning, so don't be cheap. And get both sides. The last one's always the annoying one, isn't it? Perfect. Now to begin breading. You may notice that there's something here missing, flour. Growing up, whenever my dad made chicken cutlets or milanese, he never used flour. And when I went to culinary school, I was like, "Where? What, what's with the flour? And I've tested it both ways. In this case, it is an extra ingredient, an extra step, and I find it to be completely unnecessary. It actually coats better to this pork if you don't use flour. So while you're probably thinking, I don't know what I'm talking about, I would curse here, but I'm not allowed to anymore. I definitely do. So this is my dredging station. Three very well beaten eggs and two cups of seasoned breadcrumb. Another trick, wet hand, dry hand. So in she goes. Make sure we're nice and well coated. You can see how great a pie dish works for this. It fits well, it has a flat enough surface and it has sides to keep everything in place. Give it a couple of shakes and right into our breadcrumb. Now, use your dry hand to start covering it with the breadcrumb. When you get to this point, you can flip it. Make sure you don't miss a millimeter of breadcrumb. Every crevice, breadcrumb and press it in. We want these to be well coated and super duper crispy. Just like that. And that's ready to be fried. Make sure you press it on, lock it in there. Isn't that cool? This is kind of a fun thing to get the kids involved in too. Put them to work. Dinner was not for free at my house growing up. Thank God I did most of the cooking. My mom's cooking's atrocious. That's a big one. Time to fry them up. I've added about a quarter of an inch of vegetable oil to a pot. When frying, I like to use a neutral oil like safflower, canola, any vegetable oil, because it won't take on any flavor. 
have this going over medium high heat. And I know it's ready when I add a pinch of breadcrumb and we get some sizzle action. So you see how it foamed up and it already started darkening? Time to add one of our cutlets. Mm. We're gonna let this fry for about two to three minutes per side until it's deep, golden, gorgeous brown. Keep an eye on the edges of your cutlet. I can see it already starting to get nice and golden brown in that little nook, which means it's almost ready to flip. I'm gonna take a sneak peek. Almost there. For me, any cutlet should be on the brink of being burnt for it to be delicious. Now just another couple of minutes. Oh yeah. Transfer it to a wire rack. If you put it on paper towels, it's gonna get a little soggy and the breading is gonna start to fall off. Get another one in really quick. And then while it's still hot, Add a nice, generous amount of a flaky sea salt. You can see it melting into that hot oil. Some of it won't melt. It'll add a little bit of an extra crunch and extra seasoning. These cutlets are gonna cook really quickly, so keep an eye on the pan. This is not the time to walk away and start another project. Oh my God. extra crispy for the chef. I have my oven set to the lowest setting. I'm gonna throw these in there to keep them warm. I don't wanna keep them in there too long though, just long enough to make a delicious salad. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This peppery arugula is the base of my salad. 
but any good salad needs a killer dressing, and this is mine, my white balsamic dressing. Going to start by adding a couple of tablespoons of just plain old clover honey. This bougie thing looks like a lot of fun, but it's a little messy. This is gonna add just enough sweetness, some Dijon, which is gonna add more depth of flavor. It's also going to help emulsify this dressing when we add the oil. Get that all in there. Little bit of salt, about a half a teaspoon, and then about an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Gonna whisk this to combine. Make sure you get that honey to dissolve. That looks beautiful. Now that the base of our dressing's ready, I'm going to drizzle in olive oil. Very slowly begin to drizzle in your olive oil, giving it time to break up the fat molecules and emulsify. If you can see the oil puddling in the vinegar, that means you're adding too much and it's going to not emulsify properly. I did not sign up for this much cardio today. You can see it already starting to thicken. That means that we have a great emulsification. It's a beautiful dressing. Great golden color from the white balsamic and this really good Sicilian olive oil. Mm, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm, it's perfect, it doesn't need any more seasoning. This is a very simple salad. All I'm going to add to this arugula are some beautiful cherry tomatoes that I'm just gonna have. If you don't have a small utility knife like this, a nice serrated knife, it's a really great kitchen tool. I use it a lot. I'm gonna give this a quick toss. And then add your dressing to taste. This makes more than you need for this, but it stores really well in the fridge, in a mason jar or just any sealed container for at least a week. Mm. So all set. All that's left to do is to put the two pieces of the puzzle together. Mm. It smells so good. Okay. These are nice and warm. Let's go with this big guy. Just throw that right onto a plate and then don't be cheap. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Then because God forbid I cook something and not put cheese on it. How delicious does this look? I cannot wait to dig in. But I'm kind of thirsty. I think I need to make a cocktail. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. I'm going to show you how to make probably the most quintessential Italian aperitivo, which is a pre-meal drink, something meant to whet your appetite. And this bitter campati is going to do just that. That is one of the three major components in this Negroni. This drink is equal parts campati, sweet vermouth, and gin, and it is going to punch you in the face. So I'm doing an ounce and a quarter each of these three spirits. This is our sweet vermouth to balance that bitterness just the slightest bit. And we can't forget about the gin. This is a London dry gin that I'm using, then some blood orange. I like to peel it directly into my beaker to catch any oils that come out. And I'm just going to peel off a nice healthy strip. Add some ice. You want to get this nice and chilled. It's also going to dilute this the slightest bit. And stir, stir, stir. At least 20 seconds. Really let those flavors combine and let it chill throughout. Perfect. Get yourself some bougie ice. Mmm. So pretty. Then, every cocktail needs a garnish. Another strip of our blood orange skin. Give it a little twist. And then I kind of like to run it on the rim just to get those oils on there. Little extra hints and punch of the orange. Now, if you feel like this is a little too bitter for your palate, we're gonna make its less aggressive cousin, the Americano, which is pretty similar. We're gonna start the same way with our compati, using an ounce and a half this time. And then the sweet vermouth. No gin in this one. So it's not gonna be quite as boozy. Perfect. Same thing. And stir, stir, stir. More bougie ice. <laughs> Isn't that such a beautiful color? Then, finally, we'll top it off with club soda. How beautiful that effervescence. Don't forget about our little garnish. Our little straw. There you have it, the perfect Negroni and the Americano. Can't wait to share these with my friends. It is a pretty color. Then a little twist. Thank you. You stir. It like dilutes it a little. Welcome. Hey. Oh. Such a treat. 
This looks delicious. Beautiful. Some pork milanese. Nice. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. with a woman who can drew, truly do it all. We are talking about Drew Barrymore. She can drew it all. She's drew an actress. She's an author. She's an executive producer. She's a talk show host. She sews her own clothes. And now <laughs> she's adding something new to her resume. Editor-in-chief and founder of her own lifestyle magazine. It's called Drew. Good morning. Good morning, darling. I'm so excited to talk about this with you guys first. Um, this is the first time that I have publicly spoken about this yeah. because you really can't probably shouldn't talk about anything before you actually do, <laughs> do it. it. Yes. And that's wise advice. Action does speak louder than words. And this is it. This is the first time I'm I'm getting to Can I see? It, uh, yes. I just want to look Please. while you while we discuss. It's good. It's got good <gasps> stuff. It's, it's glossy. glossy. It's fun. We've been texting. Yes, we have about the magazine because it's so exciting. It's so fun. And you're like, this was one of your childhood dreams. It literally was. I have pictures uh, that I provided. I don't know if they'll come up, but no. uh, yeah, there oh, you yeah. go. So that is me. Why I'm having barbells in my hands is another <laughs> story. But this was you... how I grew up. I <gasps> created wallpaper. Oh from magazine tear sheets all over my bedroom walls, and I still do. And now it's very in fashion for designers and home is to create those big, large-scale mood boards. And I guess that's what I wanted to do when I was a kid. Magazines are such an important part of my life, such an important part of my education, my travel advice, my design prowess, food recipes. It really is the kind of thing that I am a huge subscriber. I love paper. Yeah, yeah. We're not digital. <laughs> and I want to go harken back to the analog me that has, <laughs> you know, is self-educated. And magazines are a huge part of my education. You talk about, I like how you talk about happiness and joy. Like that's front and center. And I'm thinking you're 40. Are you 46? 46. You're 46. Yes, proudly. And we, I had interviewed Tina Fey a, a week or so ago, and she said she did not find her voice, did not know who she was until 40. Really? So, yeah. So do you feel like you've found that part of you at I this point? I think I always had confidence, yeah. and I watched Pippi Longstocking as a kid, <laughs> and she basically gave me the freeway and the runway to feel like girls could do anything. And I think that I've always known who I was and had that confidence, but I have struggled for self-improvement and to learn and to grow. And I don't think that I should have a talk show or be a part of a talk show or a magazine, honestly, until this point. I think oh. I'm the most well-rounded with still a long way to go and a lot more to learn, but I'm so glad it's at this interval of my life when I feel this, um, the, the, the work is really paying off. Mm. There's been so much soul searching. Fun, I never had a problem with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joy and optimism, never had a All problem right. with. But something about being 46, I love talking about happiness because I now know that you really have to fight for it. You have to earn it. It is work. But the reward is there's no alternative for mm. me. And I think I found happiness in different ways before and as you get older that happiness is found in other ways yeah so i wrote the essay um the pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. in there and i think happiness is not this lofty ridiculous concept it's a very mature wise choice hmm. and it isn't always easy and it's not always on tap but if you harness it it's worth it well, speaking of things to be happy about, you're Emmy nominated in your Wait. first year as a talk show host. As are you, as are Look, you guys I always. Look. Which, so I'm so excited to be in your company. First of all, year one. Year, year one. one. That's what makes it unique and awesome. I'm going to tell a quick story yeah. uh, that we, when we started September 2020, election, COVID, Black Lives Matter, Supreme Court nominees, very scary time to speak out about anything. Not a lot of people had things to promote. 
Mm -hmm. People were nervous to even talk about things on television because they didn't want to say the wrong thing. It was a very taboo, uh, intimidating, unprecedented time. Um, and then over the Christmas break, we got a huge focus group feedback. And it, it was rough and it was harsh and it was intense. What Just, you know, what is this show? What, oh. the, I, you know, why... Why is she so darn happy? Like, <laughs> you know, the SNL sketch. But it was yeah. also positive. But it was a confusing time. And it wasn't an easy road. And what I'm really glad about is that somehow we came out the other side and learned a lot in that year, as everyone said we would. Yeah. Um, you talk about finding yourself or gaining, you know, wisdom at a certain point in time. A show takes a lot of evolution and growth. But to, to get that Emmy nomination is so nice because I'm so happy that my bosses feel good mm -hmm. about <laughs> the so journey funny. we went on. I'm yeah. like, yeah. does this mean we, we can we, keep going? Yeah. Okay yeah. It's just relief. Yeah. I'm so happy. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a smooth sale and it wasn't a confidence booster. It was a lot of finding our way in a tough time. And so I'm just so grateful that we didn't totally fail. <laughs> Honestly. You are so Don't funny. Don't you love Drew? She always tells yeah. the truth. Yes. Like, let me just give it to you straight. Truth pill. And over the Christmas break, when we got the focus group back, I was like, Oh, yeah, okay, we're, and, and you, you just, it's important to hear all the things that don't work so you can figure out the things that you Let do. Let me give you a little tip. We don't do focus groups. No. Don't find out. Don't no, bother. Just, just keep going. Well, and you can't change who you are. Yeah, exactly. So you so. stick with your authentic self. You live an authentic life, but you kind of garner what is what people want and need, because I don't think any of us do this ultimately just for ourselves. We're yeah. trying to put something out there in the world for other people. Well, now that you're an ex expert, you can see we're getting the big rap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, and get up, you know, live. I, we started yeah. live. So, yeah, I get it. Thanks, guys. I'm, right. sure, <laughs> I'm sure their favorite line was, I'm going to tell a story. <laughs> like, Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. And we are back with Today Food this morning. The one... The only Martha Stewart. Martha, Martha, yeah. Martha. We all know she's the queen of decorating, cake baking, <laughs> and gardening. Well, now she's sharing an up close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories. She's got a new show. I cannot get over this title. Martha gets down and dirty. Take a look. The best use of a chainsaw I ever heard, though. A couple was getting divorced, and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings. And the wife just said, OK, well, you take half of everything. And she went away. <laughs> And her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half. So That's it's a feel-good show. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside. But everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. 
Well, I am the queen of queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just just kind of be myself and and uh, and show all the great gardening tips, how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors, and uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian. Tiffany Haddish is a hoot. <laughs> and there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker comes you on the show, it. too. I, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I forgot because it was and during the pandemic. But yes, I, we were talking about yep. the, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so, oh, barbecue rub. Barbecue and, rub. They did say it was yeah. Martha down and, and dirty. Bar barbecue rub. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martha, tell yeah, us about these. The show's on Discovery Plus. Yeah, okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh, well, all kinds of dogs. You know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all-beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, Ooh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, lukaniko. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty, and uh, and then of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and no. grill make sure yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah, you know Al Roker. He's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments. Oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here: bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic, a, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. so, horseradish. And bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here. Martha, uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good for idea. For one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Uh, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog? What What are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, yum. I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. What? And, uh, and every place is a little bit different from, yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California in L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh, yeah. Pink's, yeah. I have a, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do you not. Have a perfect Peter Roker. I'm not Martha Stewart. Oh, well, Come on. I think, I think, I think you should be working on that one, Al, because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have, pickles, and I love bacon on Mine too. Oh, I'm wow. gonna put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. A good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy? When your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. These snappies. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. and I right. love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers, as well as Rut Hut. Rut's Hut is also oh. famous for snappers. Okay. That really? you get. You know, snaps, snappers. You put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, oh, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening then, to that Martha? That's yeah, the yeah, secret. Okay. 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 Well, opens it a little flame going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, Martha. Okay. Thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Hey. All right. All right. Look, Martha, you spoken. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. Swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're back with two of the funniest people we know, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. <laughs> I, like, I just like looking at them. Look at uh -huh. them. They're the hosts of NBC's craft competition show, Making It. Back for season three tonight. Take a look. Yeah, look at that face. For your first Faster Craft Challenge... We want to see the most fun version of you in the form of an original handmade toy. This toy can represent you, something you love, or something you used to love as a child. Your toy must have an interactive element. Now, to get you started, here's our world-famous catchphrase. And listen close, because we're only going to say it all the time. <laughs> now, make it! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it so much. There's so much joy. Amy and uh -huh. Nick, I mean, did you really think this would catch on? You're about to get to season three. Nick, why do you think people love it so much? Uh, I think, you know, the state of the world in recent years has made everybody want a, any kind of hug they can get their hands on. And this is mm. a hug in, in the form of a television show. That's also inspiring and fun. I think anybody uh, likes to have their creativity awakened and also watch other people be geniuses with a glue gun. Yeah, Amy, I love it because it's not for meanies. Like, you got to be a nice person. Yeah. Did you set out when you were making the show? Did you say, you know what, let's, let's keep that piece of it out of our competition show? 100%. When we pitched the show to NBC, we were like, there's going to be no tension. Um, and no real stakes. Are you guys in? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, a lot of glue guns. Yeah. yeah. But Amy, yeah. I mean, you you said because you came on, I think, when the show mm -hmm. launched, and we talked to you, and you were like, "I'm not a crafty person." So no. first of all, have you picked up anything? And second of all, then what? How do you? How did it fit for you? What What drew you to it? Well, honestly, the fact that Nick wanted to do it with me was pretty much the reason why uh, I, I knew it would be uh, s such a great show. But I, I, I kind of represent the non-maker in the show, the person that's curious and interested about process, which I've always been, but doesn't even know where to start. And so mm -hmm. this show is for people who feel like they're really advanced makers and then people who are just hoping to get in their garage and try something. And so I represent... I represent the people. <laughs> well, Nick, I know that you're the crafty one, but I love that Amy said the reason that she wanted to do the show because it was with you. But when she called you up initially and said, hey, Nick, will you join me? What did you think? Oh, gosh. Well, it's it's like if, if our World Series winning team had broken up and a few years later, the, the ace pitcher called and said, hey, I know we're not playing ball anymore, but do you want to get together? It's an idea for a show. We'll play catch. Uh, I'll be really funny, and you just follow me around and uh, and and like trim your beard and maybe you know compare glue to paste once in a while. And I said that that sounds like my dream job. 
you guys go way back. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know about Parks and Rec, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I was really intrigued because you, you two met in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Amy, what was your very first impression of Nick? I had an amazing first impression of Nick because he was doing a play at the time because Nick used to do a ton of kind of off-Broadway Chicago theater, and he was playing Satan, I believe, or Satan like first <laughs> in, um, <laughs> in some kind of you. play. So he had dyed hair that I feel like was shaped into scary, into some kind of scary, scary um, configuration. And so, you know, Nick has like an incredible range of the warmest giggle uh, and mm -hmm. the warmest person, but mm -hmm. he can also look very scary. <laughs> and so I met him when he was scary, but, you know, I approached him slowly and we became <laughs> <laughs> well y'all made magic so many times parks and rec as savannah mm -hmm. mentioned was such a big hit you guys get together we've seen some virtual get togethers so i'm sure people are wondering you know can we can we see do we expect any more parks and rec in our future i mean i feel like nick and i are probably the most eager and willing to do anything <laughs> We don't know how to play it cool, so yeah, we'll do it any time. I mean, I can't speak for you, Nick, yep. but. Call me. What say you, Nick? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any, any, any time we can get back in that boat. Uh, I love boats. I love fishing. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> You're a woodworker. You could probably make the boat, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I could. Amy and Nick, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Good morning to you, buddy. How did you become the quiz master? Well, I'm not sure I am the quiz master, to tell you the truth. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to uh, host this show with my brother. He and I are kind of having these side conversations in the middle of this competitive game show by these college students. But what hooked me was the fact that these kids are playing for college scholarships. Thanks mm -hmm. to Capital One, there's a million dollars in scholarships. Everybody leaves something. Mm -hmm. The winners win four-year full-ride scholarships. I've seen the impact of scholarships. That's kind of why I got involved. I don't think I'm a very good game show host. I studied the <laughs> film of Richard Dawson, Pat Sajak, some of the great hosts. It didn't really help me all that much, so I was out there doing the best I can. He hey, studied game tape. I love it. Hey, hey, Peyton, there's something in the water at the Manning House. Your mom, Archie, and your, I mean, your mom, your, your mom, Olivia, your dad, Archie, and then all the kids, you, Cooper, and Eli. A lot of people don't know Cooper. We know you and we know Eli. Tell us a little bit about your older brother. Yeah, Cooper's got a great quick wit. Uh, he's the older brother in the family, uh, has thick skin, likes to dish it out, but can take it as well. So he and I have always had a fun relationship. We kind of had an agreement early in our lives that I would help him be a little more serious and he would help me lighten up a little <laughs> bit. So that's been a good partnership. And uh, he and I spent eight days together out in Los Angeles filming this show. We haven't done that since we were in high school together. So it was fun for us. But the kids are what made it so special. They were super smart. They were funny. They like to dish it back out to Cooper, which I love. And uh, knowing that these, these kids are playing for life-changing scholarships was really cool to witness the impact it can make on them, on their families, maybe allowing another sibling to go to college. Hmm. It was really worth the time and experience. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. Hello. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. Hello. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The 
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been 15 years since model and actor Leslie Bibb had us laughing in the Will Ferrell hit Talladega Nights. After that, went on to play journalist Christine Everhart in the Iron Man franchise. Well, now Leslie is part of another superhero world in the new Netflix show Jupiter's Legacy. She plays Lady Liberty, a member of the Union of Justice who is fighting evil by day and keeping her family together at night. He already knows that he screwed up and he let you down, he let the utopian down. I just don't understand how rubbing his nose in it is gonna make it better. He's not a puppy, okay? He needs to learn about responsibility and accountability. We're not just raising a son. Yeah, well, we're also raising a human being. Mm, Leslie, good morning. Ooh. Hi, guys, how are you? We're doing great. great. You know, this is not your average superhero movie, if you will. It really dives into the topics of, you know, family, legacy, what we want to teach our children. Tell us about yes. this one. Um, it's called, you know, it's Jupiter's Legacy. It's about this group of superheroes, and it sort of spans uh, from the 1920s to present day, which I think is really cool about the show. Mm -hmm. um, and... It's it's a it covers a bunch of different things to the show about doing the right thing, uh, how great power creates great responsibility. But it also what I find interesting is you have this family trying to keep the superhero the superhero family together mm -hmm. while trying to save the world at the same time. And your character's name is Lady Liberty. So, I mean, I'm, I'm yes. thinking about the fight scenes. And I, I thought it was very interesting that you kind of had a different take on how Lady Liberty should fight, right? Yeah, it was so funny because I, when we, I remember one of the big, we had this hilltop fight that's massive and we shot it for like two weeks. And I was sort of looking at what they were doing for me and it was sort of prim and proper mm. and... I don't know. It didn't feel, it felt ladylike, I guess would be the word. And so I was asking the stunt coordinator and I was like, I, I'm just curious why you're doing this. And he's like, well, your name's Lady Liberty. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, this is, she's a mother. Superhero. She's trying to, yeah. And, but also I think the core to her and to go back to what creates the show is that she is a woman who is trying to, keep a marriage together, mm -hmm. keep her family together, have a, a nine to five job, which happens to be, you know, seven days a week, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 of keeping the world safe. Mm -hmm. And so, and I was like, you know, this woman is a lion mm -hmm. and she's gritty and she will fight tooth and nail for anything she loves. So the minute I said that he changed everything. And I was like, also a weird fun fact about her is that in the twenties, she was the captain of her wrestling team. Oh. And I was like, and this is a woman who, <laughs> yeah, I was like, and also too, she's a woman who in 1929 was a journalist and chose a career in a, in a newspaper room, uh, versus, you know, being a stay at home mom mm -hmm. and she became a mom later in life. So, um, I, I don't know. I just thought it was important to sort of make her a little messy and yeah, a little a blurry there. around the yeah, edges. Yeah. Yeah. Also too, I think you can sort of look at a woman and be like, Oh, well, you're going to be in this box. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's 2021. Ladies wear a lot of hats and, and we can tick off a lot of boxes. I mean, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So what has, has quarantine? I know when, when you when you were filming in Australia, there's that whole quarantine process going on down there. Well, we, we shot this in Toronto and I'm in Australia doing a different TV show oh, right now. Okay. I'm doing this comedy um, with Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone. Nice. It's called God's Favorite. Yeah, it's called God's Favorite Idiot. It's super fun, but we shoot in Australia. So I was in quarantine for two weeks in Sydney and um, it was intense <laughs> and um, no windows that opened. Oh, and drinking, right? uh, wow. I chose not to drink. Al, because I thought it would be depressing mm. to wake up hungover <laughs> in a room 
with windows that didn't open. And That's I'm glad thought. I made that life change. No fresh air. <laughs> I also thought that maybe I had been um, hitting the sauce a little bit too hard during the like, pandemic. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure everybody was drinking. And I was like, bib, you've got to pull your, you know, you got to pull <laughs> it together. together. So, yeah. yeah so we, if I used the two weeks. I, I got them to deliver this um, treadmill to my, my room and they can't bring it in your room. So they leave it in the hallway and then you put on your mask and I dragged it into the room and it was like this collapsible, uh, treadmill that my hand to God, it was like a Barbie treadmill. <laughs> uh, my, I, my legs hung off the end of it. Oh, I would walk on it and my leg would fly off. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, my and then gosh. I'm going to have a broken leg. Oh, and I will not be able to. Leslie, you're such a delight to talk to. <laughs> Jupiter's Thank Legacy is streaming on Netflix right now. Have the best day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much, Oh, my Leslie. God, you too. Bye-bye, guys. Okay. The soothing rhythm of nature. The certainty of growing things. The kind of faithfulness that whatever life does, whatever, and I think over the last year of the pandemic, this has been a very powerful, that however difficult things are, there is, a, there is a surety that things will grow and they will flower and they will die. And that's fine. That's okay. That's part of the rhythm. Life endures. It happens. Yeah. yeah which is incredibly grounding at a moment when most of us feel like so much is out of control. It's connecting you with, with things that feel like they matter. You don't even have to explain why they matter because they just do. And they, and they also are real. You can't fake it. Monty Don has been Britain's most famous gardener for decades, hosting BBC Gardener's World for the last two from his home at Long Meadow near the Welsh border. Hello, welcome to Gardener's World. The show now available in America, seeing its highest viewership in 10 years. It's exactly the escape we all needed. That, that pace of life, which is changing all the time, but at its pace, not yours, not the pace of modern life, and the deep rhythm of it that connects the seasons is spiritually very rewarding. As well as fun, it's nice, it's good, you know, it's easy. It's not, it's not a complicated thing. For Monty, his career in gardening sprung from a deep depression after closing his jewelry business with his wife, Sarah. Working in a garden outside really has uh, results that very often pharmaceutical uh, efforts don't. And I think that everybody can improve their well-being, if you like, if not their mental illness. So you can improve your mental health by working in a garden. And my goodness, we all need that. Monty is joined every Friday night in prime time by his two popular co-stars. There's Nellie and Patty. Meanwhile, stuck at home, we had all become gardeners. So these are some of my seedlings. So I think these are kaolettes maybe, or this is kale. Didn't label them, rookie mistake. That's supposed to be salad. This is supposed to be lettuce. With varying degrees of experience and success, Monty just pops these out. And while it's a global language, our connection with the great outdoors, Monty observes, is culturally pretty different. And what struck me was the relationship with nature and wilderness and with gardens. You have such impressive wilderness. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the amazing mountains and deserts and lakes and rivers. You know, they're all bigger and, and there's just more of them <laughs> and the distance. So, there's a disconnect with your back garden and that. If you want to immerse yourself in nature, you can do a journey and, and be in as wild a state I as anyone I go hiking, in the world. right. Yeah. I, get out, I leave my house. Yeah, you see, you talk about hiking. We go for a walk. We take the dogs for a walk. We go, you know, I go out the gate and go out across some fields. You go hiking and you, you know. You, and we wear spandex. Yeah, so we, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. the whole so, thing. And that sort of, in some ways, that's wonderful. In lots of ways, it's wonderful. But it sort of makes your back, your yards redundant. When you were in America, mm. biggest difference? Well, the, I suppose the, the obvious difference is the, the sort of archetypal suburban 
American front garden mm -hmm. with these lawns running seamlessly down to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And the whole British idea of a garden is somewhere that is private and hedged in. And you don't go into it unless you're invited in. Whereas in America, hey, hi. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the same as you. It's very much, that's my MO, kind of, yeah. on, a, on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Whereas we say, hello, have we been introduced? <laughs> Do you think there's kind of there's going to be an American gardening renaissance? Yes. Kind of on, we're on yes. the cusp of that. Absolutely. And not just a renaissance, I think a genuine naissance, a birth. <laughs> I think that all the great things that we love about America, the mm -hmm. energy, the optimism, mm -hmm. this sense of making it happen because you want it to happen, um, can be applied to gardening. And optimism is central to his BBC show Big Dreams, Small Spaces, also available in the U.S., it's a makeover show with very British sensibilities. People have bonkers ideas, and my favorite two things that you do are when people say, you know, I really want to make this model thing and put this moss in here, yeah. and you say, lovely. That, that sounds like a wonderful idea. And the other thing, when people fall in love with tropical plants that are entirely inappropriate for their setting, yeah. you tell them such, and three months later, they have planted that plant. Yeah. Yeah. And you go back and they've ignored everything you've yeah. said. That's absolutely right. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I share all that, and I, I really, the, the thing about Big Dreams is obviously, what, is that it, it's based around ordinary people doing extraordinary things within the context of the, I mean, yes. the more wacky, the better. Right. But actually, some of the most moving ones, for me, have been when people have done something very modest, but it's been big for them. It's not a race, it's not a competition. And now a new generation is digging in. A club moss. I have a club moss here. Greetings. Take a look at this succulent. Last year on social media, updates and tutorials, even the dawn of the plant fluencer. As especially in the rain, they do go over quite quickly. And for Monty, that meant a younger, more diverse, more global fan base. I think what's changed because A, the whole idea of the ecosystem, of ecology, of climate change, are pressing and direct and immediate. And gardens are an expression of that, inevitably. And we care a lot about that as well, a generation. It's your and so you should, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the, increasingly I see my role in life is to empower and enable your generation to do something about it. Right. Not just talk about it or avoid it. And secondly, I think that you've, you've sort of gone sideways at it. So for example, who would have thought five years ago that houseplants would be probably the biggest oh. thing in gardening. Right. Nobody. Yes. And so, so what you've done is say, okay, we don't have a garden, let's bring it indoors. There's the internet. You now can, can talk to each other, you have access, yeah. you can show pictures, you can do Instagram. We had none of that. A whole tranche of the population have a very different relationship with their garden because yeah. that is their outdoors. That is That's their it. relationship to nature. It's not seen as a job or a chore or a duty. It's seen as something that the that can give to them as well as them do to it. And I just think that that gets us back to the basic elements of humanity. It's who we are, it's what we do, and that is empowering. And luckily, we've got Monty, Nelly, and Patty too, on both sides of the Atlantic, there to lead us. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends at Today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Yes. 
Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. And food for thought arriving in the U.S. as a refugee is certainly a difficult transition, and the pandemic has made that adjustment even more challenging. But one nonprofit called World Relief Seattle is offering some refugees a glimmer of home in a community garden, helping them grow right here in America. Take a look. Wow, thank you. Welcome to Paradise Parking Plots. Once a neglected parking lot on the outskirts of Seattle, this community garden is now host to 44 plots tended by refugee families from 23 different countries. This is a community garden for refugee and immigrant communities who wanted to grow food from their countries and they missed seeing that at their local grocery stores. Tamina Martelli is the program manager for World Relief Seattle, a refugee resettlement organization that built and maintains the garden. She's also no stranger to the struggles faced by the families she helps. I came to this country from Bangladesh. I was actually underage and I was living with this American family in a very rural part of Idaho and I was kind of like a Tootsie Roll in a marshmallow factory. I was one of the only dark people in this entire town. To live in a place that is very, very different often takes time and it takes patience and it takes kind of that resilience. I have worked in refugee resettlement related things, kind of creating that type of thing for the last 25 years. Prem Adhikari, a Bhutanese refugee, has found solace and sustenance here throughout the pandemic, growing vegetables from her homeland. So this one, we call in our language, it is chukruke, uh, but I never found in grocery store in America. We eat every time freezer before, but when I start my gardening, I eat the fresh vegetables. The pandemic did not stop the garden from hosting its Refugee Youth Summer Academy for ages K through eight. The kids learn about environmental science and work on their English skills. We're doing some online kind of virtual learning, but we're still doing a portion at the garden, which has been a highlight for the kids to be able to get out of their apartments and to come here. You can look at different types of vegetables, plants, flowers, and you can just learn a lot of things. For example, they, we, we can learn about bees pollinating. So what happens when flowers become pollinated? It turns into fruits. That's right, high five. So sorry. The summer program also employs interns from immigrant backgrounds. 17-year-old Risa Suho, a Filipino immigrant, says she was placed in special ed classes when she first came to the U.S. because she wasn't in lockstep with her classmates. When you're told that you're special ed because you can't keep up with other kids, you don't think like, it's the education system failing me, it's the thought that I'm failing myself. It's super important, especially for these younger children, to see someone who's kind of looks like them and can relate to their experience. Refugees are often incredibly resilient because of the so many different things that they have had to go through. Often I will have gardeners tell me, my plants don't know there's a pandemic. Having the power to grow your own food, a virus can't take that away. And that's kind of what we're working towards is providing solutions that are sustainable over time. Nice. And this amazing program is not ending with the fall harvest. World Relief Seattle is piloting a new winter course for refugee gardeners, too. You can find more about the program on today.com. It's good. Good for the kids, too. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. Good morning, welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. 
in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We were not but a few steps into Central Park's ramble when... This guy right here. Yeah. And he's a what? White-throated sparrow. Until that moment, I assumed all sparrows dressed alike. So these sparrows are part of kind of the first big wave of migrants that are going to be on their way through the area. And yeah. this is a good, good place to see them. We are with Cornell University ornithologist Andrew Farnsworth, a sort of Bill Nye of birds, if you will. Did it surprise you in the last year as COVID and the pandemic took over that people, it seemed like, went crazy for birds? It was not a surprise. This kind of uh, situation where people want to be a part of nature, and especially in a time when there's a lot of emotional challenge and a need to reconnect with something, anything, and the connection with birds because they are beautiful, they sing, they do cool things. Like that robin you shrewdly observe hanging around all winter. Turns out some are true frequent flyers. There are some that are residents here, but there are also birds that migrate to New York that spend the winter. There are birds that breed here that leave New York and disappear for the winter. So even though it looks like robin is always here all the time, there's tremendous flux in this species. Farnsworth has traveled the world observing, studying birds. An avian ally, it seems sometimes the birds came to him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That is just a great looking bird. I'm sorry, have you seen the warbler? I'm a little high from that. <laughs> Warblers are the epitome of spring migration. Bird watching can be mesmerizing. Great way to engage and also disconnect both. I like that phrase, engage and disconnect. Easy enough to see why so many recently flocked to this pastime, like Sheldon Goodrich. What does it do for you to come out and watch? Uh, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's, I mean, especially now in the spring, the sounds of the birds, um, sometimes just sitting and hearing the water, hearing the birds, watching the behavior, it's, it's, it's peaceful. But for birds, the world is not as welcoming as it once was. How are our friends the birds doing these days? That's a good question. It does vary by species, but if we think about bird populations as a whole, in the last 50 years, there have been precipitous declines. Birds are in fact the proverbial canary in the coal mine of the environment. The North American bird population is down by three billion since 1970. If we're thinking about birds as uh, indicators of our environment, what does three billion birds lost say about the challenges our ecosystems are facing around the planet? Nearby, a massive barred owl has been perched for months. I check her when I can, and most of the time she's there. Isn't that something? Oh, it's great. It's great. As if to remind us that birds are a cherishable, but also perishable, gift of nature, not to be taken for granted. And I've been listening to a chorus of birds this morning. Mm. <laughs> House wren. <laughs> On cue. Could you hear it? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And for people who want to get into this, there are so many sites. Cornell, for instance, has this amazing ornithology department. They have a great eBird website. You can get into it. I've seen one for the state of Minnesota. There are all kinds of them. To, to help you take little tiny, tiny steps into this amazing, amazing avian world. It's, mm -hmm. it's just terrific. I feel more peaceful just after yeah. that story. I wonder yeah. if the birds are on Twitter. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Al, do you know the difference between a bird watcher and a birder? Uh, no. Bird watcher, they say, is just somebody who just observes birds. Mm -hmm. But a birder is somebody who will travel to go look at birds. Oh, mm. right. So I guess well, you're they a keep birder. lists. A lot of these folks keep lists, and they want to make sure. Oh, I haven't gotten the something something sapsucker yet. Right. So they, ah. you know, take off to go Seek find it. Yeah. The something something sap sapsucker. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Our local right. birder, Harry yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yeah. The last six months, bird I've seen watcher, so many bird, bird watchers. Bird watcher. So oh yeah. Do you feed the birds when you're out there? Do you bring some crumbs? That is that allowed? You know, I asked I asked Farnsworth about bird feeders, and he said it's okay. okay. And okay. there are a lot of places, actually, in Central Park, where people kind of spread crumbs oh, and yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that was allowed or not. Thank you, Harry. Okay. We spent a lot of time indoors lately, so why not get out and explore? Well, this morning's influence her is a nature lover who is sharing her passion. Rue Mapp is the creator of Outdoor Afro, a nonprofit that encourages black Americans to embrace the great outdoors. She's already inspired thousands to do it, including Miss Oprah Winfrey herself. If time and money were not an issue, what would you really be doing? And I opened my mouth and my life fell out. I said I'd probably start a website to help black Americans connect with nature. And it was like the world opened up. At 37 years old, Rue was raising three kids and finishing up a college degree when she started a blog called Outdoor Afro. What is Outdoor Afro? I grew up with such an incredible connection to nature and recognized how it had improved my life. But as I continued to get out into nature experiences away from cities, I didn't see enough people who looked like me. And I certainly didn't see us represented in the pages of the glossy magazines that highlight the outdoors. So I started that blog from my kitchen table in 2009. Today, more than a decade later, that blog has turned into a national nonprofit organization with networks in 30 states, with 40,000 people participating and growing. We do that through a leadership team of folks that we train to connect people to nature and to really kind of help people get their nature swagger back. Ooh, nature swagger. I like that. I have to tell you, I'm sitting here thinking about my childhood and growing up. As far as, let's say, going to national parks or some of those kinds of things, I don't remember us really doing that. We have to really uh, rethink nature, right? Like nature is not only in these hallowed national parks. It's right in your own neighborhood. Outdoor Afro brings people together for all types of activities. How to camp, how to fish, how to kayak, you know, those skills. But then there's also the community where you can go out and you can be surrounded by people who are learning right along with you. Yeah. When did it resonate with you I think this is going somewhere. I could see the place that Outdoor Afro could step in and fill some of the gaps that I saw. We are diversity within the diversity. You know, a friend of mine, she's like, Rue, just, just step out and the net will appear. A net she has counted on since her 20s after climbing a mountain for the first time. It is a powerful metaphor and that, that's exactly what it became for me. At the moment where I was about to give up, my instructor leans over and he says, Rue, Trust your feet. That's when I knew that nature was a healer and a teacher. In 2010, Rue was part of the think tank that inspired Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign. All you kids grow up healthy. She continues to work with the California State Parks Commission and recently took Oprah hiking earlier this year. It was so perfect to get out there with Oprah and to talk about the history of Redwoods. Those trees tell a story of rebirth and regeneration that I feel all people can connect in and relate to. I've done several interviews now with experts and when I ask them how to find peace in the middle of what feels like a stormy situation in this country, uh, one of the top experts said, you know what? Look to nature, soak up the sun, you know, just breathe. I always say that you go out in nature and the trees don't know that you're black. The birds are gonna sing no matter how much money is in your bank account. The flowers are gonna bloom no matter what your gender is or whether or not you're a Republican or a Democrat. It is truly an equalizer. There's just so much going on in the country right now. How do you, with what you do, wrap your mind around all of this? And I ask myself, like, what is it that I need to be doing right now? How do I show up? 
group showed up by organizing and leading healing hikes. It's about people getting out and really finding that healing for themselves. There's a whole range of emotion, trauma, discord that's happening. And we have to still be present for our families. We still have to take care of ourselves. And so I really want people to turn to nature to get the restoration and the healing that they need. So true. By the way, anyone is welcome to join Outdoor Afro on their adventures. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. On a frosty winter morning, Alice Lewick is suiting up. You feel warm enough? Yeah. You want an extra pair of gloves? Alice may be dressed for the sledding hill, but instead she's headed to Hickory Hill Nature School in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. All right, can we hop this? Woohoo! It's what's called a forest kindergarten, where the children are outside all day, rain or shine, even during the recent snowstorms. Stacy Gummy started the school five years ago. There are days I have to imagine where it is freezing, sleet rain or on the other end of the spectrum, it can get really humid and hot. Do the kids complain? No. Children are, are very resilient. We all know that everybody says it all the time. Here we really realize they're resilient, but we have to start off warm and we have to have the right gear. Alice began last fall in virtual kindergarten. Her mom, Rebecca, has a health condition that made in-person classes too risky. Tell me what it was like there in the beginning, trying to get her to sit in front of a computer she just wasn't getting the joy that I think she would have been getting in the classroom if we were able to do that. She just wants to be out in the world like, like so many little kids. A friend tipped Rebecca off to Hickory Hill, and in November, Alice was one of the few to get off a long waiting list filled with parents looking for a safer alternative to in-person school, one that didn't involve sitting in front of a computer. We had a wait list of over 40 children, and we have 12 spots 12 per day. Spots. Have you ever had any cases of COVID or had to shut down? None. 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 Nope, it hasn't even touched us. Forest kindergartens are getting new attention during the pandemic, but they started in Denmark in the 1950s and are popular across Europe. Ready? Let's show her. Let's see. Look. And oh, you can wow. see they've gotten a lot bigger. They might be salamander, we're not positive. I have to ID it still. So this is not teacher-led, this is child-led. We ask them inquiry questions, and based on that, they follow their interests. What did this bark come from? And there's so many studies now that show when a child follows their interests, they retain that information much more readily. Nature preschools and kindergartens in the U.S. triple in the past three years. The increase coming as children are spending half as much time outside as their parents did. Many kindergarten teachers are saying kindergarten is now first grade. What we learned in first grade is now learned in kindergarten. So that play is out the window mm. and it's tough. I think reading and writing and all that comes very naturally to children because it's fun to learn. However, we are working on life skills. 
these children are going to be resilient and able to go into a school and communicate with adults wonderfully, with, other, with their peers wonderfully, and learn to critical think. What are they doing? So they're driving their cars. Oh, they're driving cars, mm -hmm. of course. But I look at this as they are learning to communicate, work together. Yeah. A big component of four schools, risk taking. Go backwards. Oh. And pull my all goodness. your weight. So this is this is a skill that we have to teach. And they're so fearless. Outdoor play that's building a valuable skill set. Climbing trees, test their balance and motor skills. We are here to get to hear the sap running inside of it. They're learning to recognize patterns in the animal tracks around the school. Uh, a deer and learning to share in my favorite, the mud kitchen. Can I have some of those ingredients? Yeah. Those muddy clothes, they might be the only downside to the parents we spoke to at pickup. I saw you pull up and you've got a whole organized system. You take the muddy clothes, take those off. Yep. <laughs> you must be used to this by now. Yep, they come home completely drenched and covered in mud almost every single day. They love it. The smile after Alice's first day of school, making it all worth it. I texted Stacey a picture of her face the second she got in the car and I said, I have not seen this face since March. It makes me just feel such deep gratitude for the fact that she has it back and has had it since. Welcome to our Today All Day special, The Upside. I'm Craig Melvin. The Upside is all about uplifting people and stories that show the true grit of the human spirit. And after spending an amazing two weeks at the Tokyo Olympics, we couldn't help but think about the power of sports. So today we're going to shine a light on how sports changes lives, helping folks overcome obstacles both on and off the field. Now, traditionally, the sport of rowing isn't known for its diversity. While talent is everywhere, access is not. But that didn't stop the students of St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey. With the help of a dedicated coach, they changed all that. And as you'll see, the school has a, a bit of a habit of turning tradition on its head. Spending a day at St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey will leave you nothing short of inspired. You're a winner. You're a winner. Go. 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 Heart and hustle are everywhere. Thanks on three. One, two, three. Thanks. On campus and four and a half miles off. Yes, you know, that's what I want. On the Passaic River. You no, know, you're making a change if it feels uncomfortable. That's where you'll find Coach Craig White. I graduated from St. Benedict's. I live in Newark. I've lived in Newark my whole life. Uh, what makes St. Benedict's Prep different is everything. And he's not kidding. The students take charge here. So when one asked him to start a crew team, he had no choice but to take it up with the headmaster, Father Leahy. And I told him, I said, no, a crew's too expensive, Greg. We can't do crew. One day I was walking around the property, walked through a door and tripped over an erg. So I called Craig. I said, Craig, what the heck is the erg doing here? Oh, somebody just gave it to me. Here I have some story, right? The ergs kept multiplying. And then one day I look across my room in the monastery, just thinking, eight-man shell. Craig, he just ignored me. So now we have a, you're here doing a story on the crew team. What started as a leap of faith is now a 10-year success story. We're consistently getting higher and higher and higher and higher up the rankings. Our kids this year, they advanced to the semifinals at Stotesbury Cup for the first time in a decade. I never really imagined that I could be a part of something so big. When I got to the team, I was just like surprised that, wow, this actually exists. And like, it was really one of the first things that I, I could dedicate myself to. That dedication got Yamil, Jaden, and Alvaro a ticket to U.S. Rowing's Olympic Development Program. And now they're dreaming bigger than they could have ever imagined. My dream one day is to make the Olympics. I would love to go to the Olympics. My dream is to make the Olympics. If one of my kids is on the Olympics, I'm probably going to break the television. You know, screaming and throwing stuff, but it's, it's great. Do we have a future Olympian in this group? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. While gold medals would be nice, Coach White says it's the character building on and off the water where the real magic happens. Every time I have to do something hard, I like think about it. Like, I've been on the erg for like 90 minutes straight before. I just think about that and be like, okay, I can do this. If I can do that, if I can do 90 minutes on the erg, I can definitely do this. What we do on the water every day, without question, changes lives. When the kids come to us and they're a part of the team, they change. 
for a couple of reasons. One, first off, they learn and they understand that I have power to make my life better. It's not just about the sport, you know? It's about, am I making myself better? Uh, not just interpersonally, but am I becoming a better athlete? Holistically, better. Is my technique improving? Are my grades improving? Is my relationship with my family improving? And every generation of kids, every year, they raise the bar and they do that themselves. But they'll tell you, none of this would be possible without Coach White. He's like the guy. You know? He's just the guy. He's just he, the guy. He does, a, he does a lot for us. He sacrifices a lot for He's us. He's like a, kind of like a second father to me. These kids, these kids are so grateful for everything. They're grateful for each other. They're grateful for the experience. And you could literally ask them to move move mountains, and they'll do it. From changing lives to changing the world of rowing, to recognize the value of diversity in the sport, Coach says he's just getting started. The rowing community in our country in particular struggles. Um, it struggles to be able to diversify the sport. You know, our kids get hooked the minute that they get in the boat. So all we have to do is to provide access, you know, open a door. And then once the kids walk through it, they want to do it every day. I want these kids to have whatever they want. I want them to be able to grow into the world. They have the grit, they have the intelligence, they have the work ethic. So to be able to share myself and my family and my time with these kids, to be able to watch them grow, to be able to do what was done for me to another generation of, 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 of young people, What else is there, you know? Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's just shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Skateboarding made its Olympic debut this year, but it's a 46-year-old newcomer and mom of two who has everyone talking. Known by her alter ego, Auntie Skates, or B. Roy's uplifting and inspiring skating videos have gone viral on TikTok, proving she's not your average auntie. When I get on a skateboard, it is the most liberating feeling I've ever experienced. And whatever problems that I'm having in my life, they just go away. Yay! <laughs> and when I get in a, in a sari and I start flying in the bowl, it's just really fun. I feel very lucky that I found skateboarding. I could have lived my whole life and never found it. Meet Orby Roy, also known as Auntie Skates on social media. She's a 46-year-old mother of two who started to skateboard just three years ago. When I started skateboarding as a family, I started an Instagram account just to track our progress for fun and feel good about us as a family skateboarding together, and it made me really happy. Then in January of 2021, it was a particularly dark period for, I think, a lot of people with COVID, and everybody just seemed depressed. People weren't even hiding it anymore, and myself included. I think that, that mental health, everybody's mental health was suffering. 
So I created Auntie Skates as a way to spread joy and positivity. I started a TikTok account. I had never even been on TikTok before. And I took a character, Auntie, and I just started posting really fun,